Okay, should be almost live for anybody joining on YouTube now. All right. Now, um, we'll share that link in the chat here in a second if anybody had friends they wanted to share that with too. We'll give other people a minute to enter. <laughs> Hi, Cora. Hello. Hi, Marcella. Let's see. Oh, Is it there? Right there. Yeah. No, ho. no ho house. In her house. But in not Clamperate's house. No, not Clamperate's house. Look who's next to us right here. Okay, we'll get started in just a minute or two. Yeah. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah. Great. Who is um, that? Who's there? Who's there? Well, no, that was starting. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Alistair, yes. do you want to start us off? Yes, I would love to. Um, one second. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I want to. Uh, first say I'm Alistair, I'm the director of Outrider Film, a film, a documentary with and about Anne Waldman. And um, I'd like to open this epic event by just thanking all of you for joining in from wherever you are and uh, our 40 readers. So we're all here to celebrate Anne's work, Manatee Humanity, and on International Manatee Awareness Day. Um, we want to abundantly thank Anne for writing this incredible poem, Manatee Humanity. It's kind of manatee manifesto um, and work of a dear heart communing with a real manatee and all the surrounding ecology um, it requires to keep the world safe for manatees and humans. Um, I want to take just a moment to highlight uh, Kiki Smith's cover um, on the Penguin book from 2009, as some of you may have it in your hands. Um, and the, cup, the top image is called um, Wearing the Skin. And the bottom image, if I can get it up here, is called Lying with the Wolf. And I'm just so grateful to be co-hosting this event with HR Haganar and Sila Satterstrom's uh, amazing platform for Queen's Divination, HR. Thanks, Alistair. Um, yes, welcome everybody. My name is HR Hagenauer. This is Ann Waldman, the author of our book today, <laughs> as you know. Um, I'm co-hosting this event with Alistair. As we have nearly 50 um, readers and speakers to come, you might find it helpful to set your Zoom setting to speaker view. Um, and if you have any questions, please message either Alistair or myself uh, in the Four Queens Divination directly. Um, we also ask everybody, both readers and audience, to please keep your mics on mute unless you're unless you're actually reading. Um, we wanted to thank Yasila Satterstrom and Kristen Nelson of Four Queens Divination 
for hosting us all this evening. Four Queens uh, is, a, is a platform that centers divination and writing practices, and they uplift all the ways in which these two things interact. I really encourage you to check out their many offerings, including coming up on, in a couple of Sundays on the 25th, uh, Generative Somatic Writing Exercise with C.A. Conrad, who's one of our readers later tonight. Now I really want to thank all of our readers for today. You will see their names as they read, and we encourage you to look them each up as we won't have time for our introductions today. And as a reminder to our readers, please be ready to unmute yourself and, and begin when it's your turn to read. Um, I'll also be dropping a couple of links and the um, uh, order for today in the chat here momentarily. Um, our readers for tonight include, of course, Ann Waldman, Samantha Albala, Edmund Berrigan, Zoe Bresney, Leanne Brown, Ambrose Bai, C.A. Conrad, Brenda Coltis, Marcella Duran, Carolina Abade, Jennifer Firestone, Tanya Foster, Lucia H. Gaxiola, myself, H.R. Hegnauer, Erica Hodges, Serena Jost, Alistair Julian, Erica Kaufman, Vincent Katz, Jade Lossels, Rachel Levitsky, Janice Lowe, Dan Mocklin, Gazelle Mosedek, No Land, Julie Patton, Trace Peterson, Jeffrey Pethybridge, Patrick Pethybridge, Kay Prevole, Oliver Ray, Sarah Riggs, Martina Salisbury, Sila Satterstrom, Jennifer Skepitone, Eleni Sicilianos, Jonathan Skinner, Todd Tilleman, Edwin Torres and Karen Weiser. Thank you all so much for being a part of this. We have uh, we have another link to drop. Um, we want to thank uh, Save the Manatee Club for partnering with us on International Manatee Day, um, and this Save the Manatee Club is making massive efforts on behalf of the safety and ecology of manatee life. Um, and before I introduce um, uh, someone that's gonna speak from Save the Manatee, I would like to just go ahead and encourage any donations to Save the Manatee via a link that we'll put in the chat that will take you to all their creative ways to donate. Um, one of those many ways to donate is by adopting a manatee. Um, so with Ann Waldman, we adopted two manatees already. Um, we adopted Lily, the oldest female manatee in that area, spotted since 1974. And Lily's, Lily's calf, um, one of her calves, Margarito, who's said to be very curious and friendly for uh, Anne's granddaughter, Cora Bayanaya. So now I would like to introduce Cora Bircham from Save the Manatee Club, who's here to speak about the organization and Worldwide Manatee Day. Thank you, Cora. You can go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And just thank you for all of you for tuning in and for hosting this awesome event and making donations to Save the Manatee Club. It's, it's an amazing cause. Um, I have been with the organization for um, almost nine years now. We're located in Central Florida, the Orlando area, but we really do our efforts reach worldwide. So today for International Manatee Day, we are putting our in, uh, South Manatee. America, the wider Caribbean, uh, West Africa. So we, we work in Florida, but we do work in a lot of other countries as well. Um, so Save the Manatee Club was founded back in 1981 by song, uh, singer and songwriter Jimmy Buffett and uh, Bob Graham, who was Florida governor at the time. So we've been around for a little over 40 years and we really do anything from um, public education and outreach to legal advocacy of manatees, um, assistance with rescue, rehabilitation and release of manatees, as well as research, um, primarily at Blue Springs State Park, where 
behind me in the background, that's not my living room. That's a, a aggregation of hundreds of manatees at Blue Spring. Um, so for those of you who want to check them out, we also have some webcams. Um, they're live streaming at manatv.org in the winter time. So it's a really awesome way. So wherever you're listening from um, tonight, um, it's a really fun way to check them out. So again, I really want to thank everyone for tuning in. Manatees are um, in a lot of trouble right now. We had a record year for mortalities, unfortunately, last year. And although they really have no natural predators, um, they can be seen in the vicinity of sharks, crocodiles, alligators. There's, there's no issues, but there's a lot of human-related issues ranging from habitat loss to the loss of seagrass, which is their main food source, collisions with motor boats, um, entanglement in fishing gear, ingestion of uh, debris, plastic, trash in the environment. So there's just a lot of things that these guys are facing. And um, to wrap this up, everyone always asks me sort of like, what is it about the manatee that fascinates you so much? Like, why are you working with these guys? So until 2011, I had never heard of a manatee before. I grew up in Germany. I lived in New Jersey. A manatee I had no idea what that was. Um, you know, I'd heard about seals, sea lions, walruses, dolphins, all these kind of things. But a manatee, I had never heard of that. So um, when I encountered manatees, I made a documentary about them. And that's how I got involved with Save the Manatee Club. And I think what's so fascinating about them is that they're so large, but they can literally be in the water underneath you if you're in your boat or your kayak or your canoe. And you would have no idea that this is 2,500 pound mammal right there under you. And they're just so very resilient. Um, they can go through all these different things and live in such close proximity to people and still survive and thrive and um, and make it. And I think that's just a really fascinating thing. And I think it can really serve as a great example to a lot of us as well. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to, um, to the event for tonight. And again, thanks everyone for tuning in and for supporting Save the Manatee Club on, on International Manatee Day today. Thank you so much, Cora. Um, what is the name of, well, could, would you mind putting the name of your, or giving us any information about your documentary in the, or you can tell us what the name is or how we can find it? Absolutely, yeah, I can drop the YouTube link in the chat. It's called um, Before It's Too Late Manatee Documentary, which I made back in 2013 before I started working for Save the Manatee Club. So um, I'll drop that link in the chat and I still, so I'm right now, I'm the director of multimedia. So I do a lot of outreach and um, educational videos of manatees. So if anyone is interested and can uh, drop our link to our YouTube channel in the chat as well, if you're interested in learning a bit more about manatees in a little, short videos. They're really, they're fun to watch. So I do that too. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, well, speaking of documentary, we're going to start now um, with a short video excerpt from Outrider documentary, followed by all the poets. This short clip is six minutes. It's still very rough, not yet sound mixed or um, color corrected, but I've chosen to share it just to get us in the mood for manatee activism and for this um, for this reading. And so I'd like to especially thank producer Sarah Riggs and Tomas.org for producing Outrider. This clip is edited by Kristen Huntley and has very special footage of manatees taken by poet Jennifer Scapatone, who also led us to save the Manatee Club. This clip contains a music track Manatee Humanity by Ambrose Bai and, Am and Ann Waldman, and also Cello by Hyun Kim. Um, so before we go straight to the clip and the reading, um, though, I'd like to invite Jen, um, who's beaming in from Midnight in Paris, to say a little bit about her manatee footage that's in the clip, um, which is just really a fraction of, of all that she gave us to use. So I'm going to give it over to you, Jen, and then I'll play the clip. Great. So I took most of the footage of the manatees that appears in this montage of Outrider in December 2020 on the Gulf Coast of Florida, where my sister lives and has been part of manatee watch programs to try protecting these mammals from human abuses of various kinds. I was stymied in that period from seeing my ailing parents, whom I'd crossed the continent to see that holiday season due to a positive COVID test in the family. Instead, I spent time observing the manatees in their warm winter waters. 
mornings, occasionally a playful baby would approach me. I'm careful not to approach them myself and harbor a kind of anxiety about getting too close. The manatee, as we've just heard, has no natural predators. This makes the species particularly adorable and vulnerable. In a period when humans were conditioned to regard one another as potential predators, in springs and rivers lined with aggressive political campaign flags, to come face to face with an endangered creature turned my heart inside out. I had Anne's manatee humanity, which she had given me as a gift at Naropa University as an anthem in mind the whole time. On the last two days of my trip, I called the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, finding a manatee isolated and coming up repeatedly for air in a residential canal. I sent footage to scientists there. A rescue team arrived from Tampa within a few hours of my last call, Sunday, December 26th. I learned a few weeks after a heroic rescue scene that the young manatee struck by a propeller to the chest didn't make it. The marine biologist with whom I was in contact, it turns out, spends a good deal of her time on manatee necropsies. What provoked me to check in with the marine biologist that day was a headline. On January 10th, 2021, a manatee was discovered sleeping in the river where this footage was shot. It's back branded with the name of the 45th president of the United States. These creatures are endangered not only by such grotesque assaults or by boat strikes and predatory tourism, but by pollution and loss of food and habitat triggered by climate change, coastal development, and the fertilizer and sugar industries. Anne's book can be a sentinel as we fight against the extinction of this species, and by extension, all species, including our own. I encountered a manatee in Florida. This lone female manatee, very scarred from monofilament line and motorboat blades. And we just started looking into each other's eyes. I started seeing this creature as a kind of Buddha. It's not enough to just have feelings about, okay, I'm gonna write about this and tell you how I feel about it. So I investigated the manatee. There's a real connection between the female manatee and usually one offspring. So there's a real tender kind of situation there. And I have an only son. And so, you know, I was kind of identifying with the, the kind of mother, mammalian mother connection to child. Um, and actually my son, who's a musician, we did a composition using the voice of the manatee from a recording. And I'm playing with the words humanity and manatee, and the book is also an investigation of our humanity. The manatee, humanity, this kind of dance of the words and also the logo poeia. The manatee is found in shallow, slow-moving rivers. The manatee moves in estuaries, moves in saltwater bays, the manatee in moving moves gently. The manatee is to be found in canals and coastal areas. The manatee is a migratory animal. The manatee is gentle and slow moving. The manatee moves in slow moving rivers slowly. The manatee is completely herbivorous. The West Indian manatee has no natural enemies. The manatee has no natural enemies, but a natural man. The manatee is constantly threatened by man unnaturally. Man with his boats and plastic.
The manatee often drowns in canal locks of man. Man who makes no concession to manatee. The manatee often dies in flood control structures. Man who makes no concession to manatee, nor cares of manatee life, manatee fortune. The manatee dies in collision with watercraft. Man who does not protect the manatee. What steward of the earth is this unnatural man? Man who makes no concession to manatee. The manatee dies with the ingestion of fish hooks. Man who unnaturally makes no concession to manatee. The manatee dies from litter and monofilament lines. Man who is rank in attitude and has no use for manatee. The manatee dies entrapped in crab trap lines. The manatee dies from loss of habitat claimed by man. The manatee is maimed by man. The manatee could be aided by man. Man, oh, aid the manatee. Man, come to the manatee heart. It was a time of fossil fuel priorities, a precious business time. That's what they'll say about us centuries hence. It was a busy, get on with it business time. So you better get on with it time. They fucked us all over in their greedy, get over it time. That's what they'll say about us. That's what they'll say about us. What were they thinking? That's what they'll say about us. What were they thinking? It was commodification fun hog time. It was commodification fun hog time. Modification time, get on with it time. Modification time, get on with it. They killed time. They killed time. They destroyed our world in their future time. They destroyed our world in their future time. We're truly more stressed in time. They're truly more stressed in time. That's what they'll be saying about us. That's what they'll say. We were going nowhere but going down. That's what they'll say. What were we thinking in our stupid, selfish minds? Us. 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 Us, 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 us. They let the animals die. They let the animals die. They let the plants die. They let the plants die. They killed the air. They killed the air. They killed the water. They killed the water. They killed each other. They killed each other. They killed language. They killed language. Then along 20,000 years of keeping time once, keeping it for all once, moving it forward and it the art forward and it humanity forward and now they want to kill it kill it push push against the darkness 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 push against the darkness push push against the darkness oh money put me home oh money put me home oh money humanity put me home In these times we live in, it's so complex. I mean, it's amazing we get through the day. The level of suffering and degradation, the environmental issues and the endless war, it just makes you crazy. And so I find I go to poetry. Our motto at Naropa is keep the world safe for poetry. This idea of keep the world safe for poetry was a very playful notion people would say, well, you know, that's ridiculous. It needs to be safe for so many other things. And, and my view was, if it's safe for poetry, then it will be safe for other things. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, that's Alistair. That's beautiful, Jen. Then... Beautiful okay. footage, yeah, thank you. Did you want to say a few words? No, I just want to thank everybody for being here and taking this to heart and maybe being more connected. I certainly want to be myself and um, it leads to other kinds of investigations, the whole, you know, tentacular universe under the water. And the manatee, you know, goes way back was its closest relatives is the elephant. This idea of the, you know, this, these extraordinary uh, memory and sensitivity and compassion, empathy is the word that's used. So, and at the Skeleton Museum in Paris, the, you see all these skeletons coming at you, you know, these 
gleaming sort of white bones and the manatee and elephant are next to each other. It's sort of incredible. So thinking of that interconnectedness and the elephant stories, you know, the matriarch passing around the skull of a, a of, you know, a female who's died five years after the death coming back in this ritual way. So, you know, there's so much we don't know about the rhythms and consciousness of these creatures that just begs exploration. So very grateful for others on the path. And I, I love your footage. It's beautiful. Jennifer, thank you. Should we begin? Yeah, let's start. Okay. All right. We'll begin with a few of the epigraphs and then go right into the text. So we have Lorene Niedeker. Effort lay in us before religion at pond bottom. And then there's the Wanga of Northern Australia. Lurga songs are received by the mermaid dreamings who live in billabongs. And then there's a variant from Sir Patrick Spence. I mean, I found these things were just so uh, musical and performative and kept me going. Out and starts the mermaiden with a fan into her hand. Keep up your hearts, my merry men, for you're near the dry land. Out and spake Earl Patrick Graham with a salt tear in his ee. Now sin we've seen the mermaiden, dry land we'll never see. And there's stories of how the uh, manatee would come up with seaweed on their head and drunken sailors would uh, see them as uh, mermaids. So interesting thing there. And then finally, uh, Camel Brathwaite, stealth bombers, ghost shrouds, Tibetan journeying, spaces of time between magnets and continents, causeways into another continuum. The manatee is found, found in slow moving, moving rivers. rivers. The, the manatee, manatee moves in estuaries, estuaries moves in saltwater bays. bays. I guess we're Undercurrent. This poem takes its initial inspiration from a particular initiation teaching or wang, literally empowerment, in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, with links to a pre Vedic shamanic ritual and from an encounter and meditation on the mysterious manatee the endangered mammal of coastal waters, and the gray wolf residing particularly in the Western United States. The poem emerged as a kind of urgent discourse. The Buddhist initiation is named Kala Chakra or Wheel of Time and has been granted in recent years with accelerated frequency in both Asia and the West. The view is that such an initiation confers power and permission to enter into specific meditative practices of empathy for achieving enlightenment, clear seeing, in order to benefit others, including the plant and animal realms, as quickly as possible. It also investigates the nature of time and change. Tantra refers to a stream of continuity or thread. This ongoing stream is our own mind, which in the Buddhist view continues through lifetimes. At its subtlest level, the mind is known as primordial pure light and is free of the oscillations of conceptual thought or disturbing emotions. It presumably underlies every moment of experience, awake or asleep, like a radio that is always on, playing ceaseless, ceaselessly even between bands, or while turning, tuning into another frequency. Our mind is the basis for our experiences of death, our experiences in the bardo, which is the state between rebirths and our conception of a new life. Neither the possible static nor the volume or the particular station affects the fact that the radio is on. From a parallel perspective, 
neither intensity of our experience nor the dramas of our discursive thoughts and moods affect the clear light mind that is also on. Each stream of continuity is individual as well. All radios are not the same, although their receivers work the same way. In this view, there is no such thing as a universal mind in which our minds all participate, but rather myriad unique individual pathways, innumerable possibilities. One of Jack Spicer's metaphors for the poet is the radio. The poet is always on. And what is the mind of a manatee? Was a question for this poem. There seemed something wonderfully cognizant and primordial and on in the manatee spirit, albeit at a less speedy frequency. I remember William Burroughs sensing, maybe riffing on something Jack Kerouac had said, that so many animals seemed to be in Samadhi. He thought this was the case of his cats, and he often said that he would prefer the company of lemurs to that of humans. Tantric practices use the imagination for visualization in order to identify and invoke certain energies with one's own mind and body. It is essentially a practice of empathy. The rainbow colored Kalachakra deity has four faces and 24 arms and a consort with four faces and eight arms. The more arms, the more power of action and efficacy. Traditionally, one visualizes oneself as the deity during the initiation to conjure greater compassion and then dissolves the image at the close of it. The mandala or map created for such an event is of a symbolic universe. It describes a palace and surrounding grounds where the Buddha figure dwells, which the initiate enters imaginatively. Like the parts of our body, each architectural feature corresponds or refers to a realization that we need to maintain activity in our minds. A mandala may be a three-dimensional structure, and a mandala made of colored powders or sand is a blueprint of that structure. The initiation with preliminary preparations takes three days. I received this initiation with several hundred people on two separate occasions some years ago. The guides were renowned meditation teachers in the Tibetan Buddhist lineage. I was struck by the highly ritualized and lush nature of the three day doings the first time not at all sure I was comprehending the slightest essence of the Kalachakra's profundities. And I certainly felt inept and clumsy trying to follow all of the instructions and complicated visualizations. Entering the initiation, we were given two pieces of kusha grass, one short, one long. We were told to place the short one under the pillow and the long one under the mattress where we sleep and to observe our dreams. My particular dream was of the Armageddon variety, somewhat terrifying, with dismembered and eviscerated human and animal corpses lying about as in a classic war zone or brutal abattoir. I remember hiding in an alleyway with forbidden sacred poetry books that were also under siege and were to be quickly memorized. Yet there was an alternative to this dark vision, one of escape and of a community of others in the same predicament. We were being helped by aquatic creatures. I remembered the story of my Huguenot ancestor escaping persecution across the Atlantic with the family Bible hidden in a loaf of bread. The kusha grass is supposed to purify inauspicious dreams. I thought as I awoke that the dream was the very reality that the Kalachakra initiation was meant to cope with, that this advanced ceremony was being made available to many, including those not necessarily Buddhist, as a way to work against the insanity of the increasingly dark and corpse-strewn Kali Yuga, or Dark Age, an age where war and suffering and inhumanity seem pathologically endless. The view, as I understood it to be, was to get free of the samsaric wheel, at least comprehend how time, space, 
matter, and especially mind or consciousness work. I remember thinking during the large gathering that although my first Kala Chakra initiation seemed like theater, at one point the initiates were wearing blindfolds or pure fantasy, we were putting our bodies inside this creation, this vivid spectacle, towards some elevated purpose. I thought of Antonin Artaud's sense of the theater being the place or state where one comprehends the human anatomy and that with the human anatomy, one can heal and direct life. As such, the text of the Kala Chakra initiation moves through numerous descriptions of both macrocosm and microcosm, examining external and internal and other outer, inner, secret details of the environment, the body, the stars, and even the finest increments of atoms and molecules. Time in Buddhism is primarily a measure of change. In fact, time is understood to have no beginning or end, but only the reality of change. What does not change is the will to change, is the oft-celebrated line from Heraclitus. Universe, civilizations, and life forms arise and fall. Liberation from time means liberation from confusion, from an onerous, sorry, from an erroneous view of how things actually occur. The poem is an investigation into and an improvisation upon some of the ideas and concerns of the Kala Chakra, layered with a vow of take all the animals with you in your life, your poetry. This is not systematically or linearly presented, however, and the poem eschews most of the points of the minutiae that a visualization of the atoms of the body and the universe entails. How many breaths we take in one day or the complex systems of astrology used for making predictions seemed hard to capture systematically or the descriptions of the precepts concerning the 25 modes of tamed behavior. What is so astonishing in the obsessive ritual descriptions, however, is the vision of a person, how complicated that is, and then what it takes to unravel and purify the conditions of the mind of that person and set it on another more beneficent path. What is sentience? What is consciousness? What is humanity? What is empathy? What primarily interested me, however, is the intersection of the wisdom, descriptions, and presumed efficacies of the Kala Chakra with modern neuroscience concerning the nature of mind and of consciousness in the brain theater. I became driven by the notion of mirror neurons as a way to understand leaps of sympathy and inspiration in the human condition. Some of the practices of Tibetan Buddhism such as visualizing icons, seed syllables, deities, and so on, are meant to imitate and lead to states of consciousness, awareness, and empathy that counter the normal tendency to disconnect from other and maintain a territory of personal ego. Finally, invoking the gnosis of the natural environment and its denizens as recommended in the mandala of the Kala Chakra initiation, I summon life forms that seem particularly threatened. The poems, litanies of the, man of the manatee and lemur and the wolf dream are meant as lyrical interludes, modal structures of both plea and restitution, and they stand in for all endangered species. The day a few years ago in Miami, when I spent several hours in the presence of a wounded manatee in a local sea park was key to this project. I vowed to include manatee, I believe it was a she who had weathered human harm and neglect. She seemed an ancient soul and contemplative in her demeanor, huge, Buddha-like. And I fancied that I received transmission from her example, which was a witness to cruel captivity. The Buddhist view is that all life forms are interrelated through their evolutionary history and that all animal and human minds are both participants in reality. We share the planet with many non-human temporalities. Minds exist at the quantum level, below the level of atoms and subatomic particles. As is said, minds never come from nothing or go to nothing. I visualize the manatee's realm in the shallow pool as a shrine. I perceived her less as a victim and more as a poetic deity. And I felt she had the greater sympathy for me 
The manatee, ostensibly, has no use in the current world. It's odd how creatures, pacifistic, transcendent even, go extinct as human realms of cruelty, plunder, and war grind on. Outer, day one. Study density of maxed out earth, planet, universe. Study our captivity, oh humanoids. Zoom in on the bold cypress or Haliaketus leucocephalus, bold eagle stalker. Consider our exile, depravity in a strange laboratory. Is it a cosmic contest? Who is the most backward, barbaric, bellicose, greedy psychopath? Or whose cries the future with greatest unsurpassable wisdom? Scries delicate muscle of land and sea? Predicts the trouble spots of flood, tempest, famine, the curling hurricane with its black and blue eye of all storms. Devastating, deleterious, cyclone, no hiding place down here. Do I have to choose, compete? Will there ever be a better time, oh humanoids, for endangered inhabitants, critically harmed ones? Animalized spirits plead you out of inexhaustible till they drop, eco dream and delirium. Enough, enough, kefaya. They talk and the dead talk too. Tell of mythic wonder and fragility in zodiacal light. Tell how the meaning of sentience, as in the ability to experience suffering, makes us all kin. Tell of lovemaking under lindens, weedy glee, remember? Tell of magical beasts and weeping trees cross wounded galaxies like meteors or as crystalline crystalline deities, all particles reflected, exposed, rehearsed by a magnanimous, sunny disposition to survive. Devour, destroy, yet survive, or you who keep all this going in language, oh, language brains. Who speaks for the wild universe? Who goes down to the count? O oh, mute promise of bunnies overpopulating the sod, utopic possibility, burning brain. O oh, cutthroat language, I am truly on fire. Dear definitive new Darwin, where are you? Or rather, where is she? Hiding in the mandible scriptorium, the slime mold lab. Standing on a rapidly melting habitat with the polar bear, Tell us what we are. Did we do it all wrong for survival mode? Did we screw up? Can I make it up? Try, overcome, desist, resist, blossom again. Buck the system in cyborgian mode with synthetic flashback mechanism, with military precision techniques, with projectile costume of vamp and dare and stiletto the better to enhance you by, or breathe and wait for the next hallucination. Give me orders, I'm soldiering fortune. Is this not a torture trap version of unfittest world? With tre trepanned head, my thinking, so weird and complicated now, by end of world scenarios, end of history dramas, where I can't think straight, mind queered in every direction, Genre, gender, zonal, racial, as the definitions bleed together, freaked, torqued, damaged. With this wounded head, I embraced the poem. I said, I would move from A to C, Z, travel all the years with you, millennial. I said, I would be all constituents and write many continents. I said, I would intone my litany of curiosity. I would dance with the language and dialects of bees. I would be mummified to speak the Egyptian way. 
out of cranial stuffing, messing with circadian rhythms. Let's agree on the symbols, dear partners in sound. To get across this passion and heat, I would keep the syntax of sorrow in April. Grief on every side can't withstand itself. But it must be said in April, it must begin in April, sweet April with frogs and crickets and procession of equinoxes, oh, activator ram. But do with experiment of empathy, all oh, I must identify in empathy, you too, and the light of a hundred thousand Buddhas guide us ahead, just barely on by a gorgeous scarf of rainbows and galaxies and the tiniest stars and fireballs and cenital projections and tales of Senghe expeditions when China tried to tie up the world with trade. She would be an example of reach of time and space. I am no zoologist, but a field poet with a psychomatic arc with tender love of the manatee. What century are we in in that threatens manatee? Please come home to me in this one, my darling, my love, my friend, companion, who sings of all this too. And you, manatee, you join in this convivio. Meet, meet me in the Brocas area, where Nika's area by the edge of supramarginal gyrus, angular gyrus at the primary auditory cortex. I will be waiting, oh, sapphire, oh, sapphire lily, all the lilies come to, and radiant colors of cither I play to aid the task of liturgical assignment arrive. Study humanity's expansion, humanity's destruction, neuroscience lilt and tilt and get back to me, dear you, in our conversation, unspecified you or you I'm talking to, zero growth, young blood, youngster theory, youthful mm -hmm. offender, you, 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 Yucatec or Yucca moth, you who throb, I'm coming near you, it's bright, jumpy Tuesday, we're hoping some kind of weather arrives, might resemble spring. Red wings keep up quite a racket, buds deciding whether it's safe yet or not. Hold back or keep alert here. If I could see you masticating humanoid as Siberian tiger, gray wolf as hairy, eared dwarf lemur as cheetah as blue whale if i could but see you morph as snow leopard unkia unkia or panthera track you from afghanistan to lake baikal and eastern tibet with your ringed ash brown spots and elegant rosettes of black stalking your prey what if and why did my brain incubate all those long years? And why was it not using its genius to make fire? And why not art, the making of which would stir neurons further and touching the texture of stone, shaping hand to stone, putting marks upon it further? And why not, why? To further beauty in the making of art, and why in sound, too, not making music all those long years? Sounds imitate what must have been the call of birds or of the body in internal hum and chatter and growl, chit and woo, woo, woo. Parts of the body convening together as alluvial, as sound together, alluvial. Alluvial, in strange harmony or discord too, or in hunger, need, desire, fighting in all the discords of desire and wooing too. Signal distress, signal delight, signal the stark moon you see and eclipsing of it, signal distress, signal delight, signal redress, mistress, redress, and holy moon and cry when the moon disappears, returns and celebrate by dancing. Why did not my brain dance all those long years? 
would this not be in the frame of that incubation and calibration toward gender, toward yearning, toward other particulars of size and gaze and color? How many thousands of years and between all and what is human? Thousands of possibilities constituting, reconstituting, thousands upon thousands. And why did my brain incubate all those long years not using its genius to make fire? Cry for water with a parched sound and why? How could it with slow memory without knowledge of itself now growing, moving slowly, know itself? Why? This, the Ur world, keep silent within long, vast, still silence, then grow into sound and sounding. No need for anything to grow from my fingers, grow from moist womb, yet. But what would grow naturally of sound and sounding? What will to fight and grow? Tongue to speak and know that love is reciprocated. And when injured, to cry out in panic, surely. And when in making of love, to cry out also, surely, in panic, in pleasure. And in coming to birth, cry. Speak about coming to birth, pleasure, making love and panic, cry. And you speak about eyes that lock together, a pair of heads together, not a clued, but of dimmer now coming to light in wit mutual or when the consciousness can look at itself, know its wit and fractured rhythm, and when in making of love to cry out surely and fiercely, cry, cry, and coming to birth to cry out decidedly a long cry of mother, and in death too, a discordant wail in minor keys and all the ululation. Why did the brain incubate all those years? Why not using its incalculable genius to make fire? My, what size you are, my hominid and of intellect not strewn about? Why are you at the root of my word, lamfanein, to escape notice? Why do you explore the periphery of la terre to lie hidden? Inside a universe with a hidden dimension, one tries curling up inside of what if and why. And heard why not explore realms of where we meet. Older one stone of irregular edge cuts another stone crudely stone of a regular edge cuts broodingly old woman old woman hold the blunt instrument to soothe thee or Archelian more gracile hammer flakes off stone rue thee and vocal in the cry of hunt kill what kill thee primate surprise chieftain so named by Linnaeus Survival mechanism, self recognizing, pro simian, mirror, neuron. She stood up, shrill, hurried conversation, expressing sorrow. Oh, snared swan, once in the mirror, backlit by sun, beauty, me, a snared swan, I excite you, gesticulate. Modern heterosexist presumption, not in place by candlelight. You are beauty, you moving up the ladder of this spine, and I a fragmented me. Do mirrors have eyes with bestial affection for you of kin, but no matter, of purpose shatter? Would a shepherdess be in eclogue splendor if she could but be those cranial valleys and stars, both by kin of this action left hand lifts kind palm open hands free for greater locomotion out on open savanna slope of beckoning now swing turn grab a kindred object 
how you feel, attraction, hold, offer a mandible heart, cross-dressed body, puts on syncretic pelt and moves as in plucky mating dance, stabs at promise, tongue's word, stand up looking eye to eye, my grip around your legs, footprints at Le Toli, three Australopithic scenes crossed a carpet of fresh volcanic ash, walking much as we do in two-legged gait, hip and leg gone, much the way toward human form and place of what in apes suits them for swinging through trees, scamper on all fours, along a line that leads to man, clutch a mind, held tight together in proprio perception of you, mordant sweet. Maybe the grand occasion laboratory for kindred study, all my mam uh, mammalian characters, hybrids, not mirror stigmata, moving under sine waves together. His name is her heart again. Sign off. And the distraction of his, her, one's monkey mind makes me wild again. Donkey telephone, donkey strife, the saint in me abandoned. Light rails of imperceptible emotion, supersonic lifestyle, jet off again, carbon hoof print, catch me, watch me, catch me, watching. Humanity performs the same action wherever it travels, tiled roof, mud wall, thatch hut, war zone, tense shanty, gradients of to cross a bridge, to cross a bearing straight, all traits at play, humanity plays at dying, plays at vanity, all ings and itties and dies. Dear humanity, please do not end this time in slaughter. You've traveled so long and hard. You too, or me, empathetically. I struggle inside you, my biped. Follow, follow, talk, squawk. This is furnace, light up. This is auto death, light more fiercely burns. This is torture, recoil, wince, scream. This is love in the labyrinth, uncertainty. This is murder in the labyrinth, atrocity, chip. See, chimp, do a shell game. Find artifice, chimp, know thyself in mirror recognition. Mother to son, this is the way we operate down here in virtual humanity. Monkey under the scalpel, test monkey, task tedium monkey. Pity for you the long afternoons examining the validity of a hypothesis. Unplug monkey from the neuroscience machines. Such a cell might recognize a gesture, wave in jittery feeling, tone, love or horror. Such simple test glass on a table, light through her hair. Someone held against will, silence initiates the first experiment. Raise a hand and jest and build your neural cargo cult and fly out of here, stiff pantomime. Impersonate an incursion in the cage. Manatee brain floats in jar on the scientist's desk. Pick up the tablet. Pick up the stone, hold the mirror to the beating heart, now ripped from its cavity, turn it over. Do not eat this thing. Does the bird understand its oviparous offspring? Do not eat this thing. And would that thought be motor 
or sensory. And would that thought occur to you anyway? Worrying your accounts and timesheets below bed sheets, worrying your muscles and tendons, your sexual prowess. I ask the drawn out day, all jittery again, of you to set humanly free. Please water the mirror of this thought. Jump to make this case. Direct attention, choose experience. Ribald, random, and important changes. And the throat structure allow the sounds uttered by homo erectus. To approximate human speech, glance that diverts and darts and recent pictograms from Tigris and Euphrates were the origins of this poem 5,000 years ago, and you are suddenly outside what you thought you saw. You, a gazing one, watcher, seer, made in a laboratory with shock wires, probes, calibrating tools, measuring what you are not, what was just in there, not lost, but what went wobbly, water-tailed, winged, where language held your hand in to freighted kinship. Attention boosts measure the salience of its target talks and gets booted off a spectrum. Salience of neural representation so related to the activity of cells serving it that you jolt awake. Eureka, I got it. My mind, a net of jewels, diamonds of alliance or dalliance, skin grows back invisibly in the dark forest to cover this treasure trove. Attention increases the discharge rate of neurons coding for a target as you get their attention and walk in the room. All eyes on you, target trove, as if imprinted on chest, arrows come at you from the dominant tribe that sunk many animals. A living legend in her leopard dress, seeing is always seeing as, as art educates perception. They were called thunderstones, a kind of folk etiology. They were thought to be lightning strikes or elf shot missiles, hominids of the lower Paleolithic on whom the leopard prey knew this and thinking was what you came from, how you behaved? In view of the welcoming gallery locked in a museum now of value only atavistic, the mannequins in their distress positions, tableaus of resistance and survival, women at cook pots, men hunkered down over core tools, pebble choppers, bifaces, lithic reduction, all in concert in a battle axe culture, quartz, quartzite, basalt, obsidian, later flint and chert to advance consciousness, vocal cords even more evolving, and she bends to caress the puppet child in the display case, a wild wolf dog at her feet. Hush now. I tell you, any rock that holds an edge will do to activate a narcoleptic brain, and that was my first sentence. Any rock that holds an edge will do. I mumbled this in sweet er time when I was naked, when I had desire that we might survive and get the human exploitation off the sharp edge. Animals butchered by tools included water buck, heart of beast, spring buck, zebra. And I thought of reflexivity to suckle, and had I a chance? 
Had I a chance in this form? Kamchara expedition 1741 to 1742, Captain Vitus bearing in two ships, St. Peter and St. Paul. We're on the way home to Kamchara following the expedition to map the coast of Alaska for Tsar Peter I, the great of Russia, and spotted the creatures hidden behind them, their ancestors. Ancestors of stellar sea cow, du Cicerian Duana and du Cicerian Jordani were once widely distributed around the Pacific Rim from Baja to Japan, where Hydra de Malis thrived until the coming of humans in the Pleistocene. Du Cicerian Jordani was coming in the shallow coastal waters of the late Miocene, California, 10 to 12 million years ago. Order of Cyrenia near Africa in early Eocene, 45 to 50 million years ago. The term comes from Haitian word manati for breasts. Breasts like women's that suckle their young. Carib manatui, manatuf. Maybe Mandingo origin, given by Spanish colonists, Latinized and Manatus, infrasound product of larynx Ojibwa Manitu, turned with its hands, hand like form and hand like use of the four flippers. And I thought Mantuas thigh to prophecy, had I a chance in this form, humanity. Manifestus caught in the act of. And in the dream, he, she is fast upon me. And in the dream, I suckle him, her, one as close as domestication allows. And in this dream, had I a chance, everything is something else to eat, good means, good to eat, all the pronouns. They had decided to walk to the ferry boat now. The map of the lakes lay on the table. She picked up the book close by, setting the map aside, and as she approached it now more closely, now looking at it, she was happy to see, and she did this quickly, Lifted as she was by the title, the photographs within. Walls, a superimposition of a she-wolf's face. It was a book by a friend, the name of a friend clearly on it, whose writing she admired. It was lateral writing, a kind of meditation on the detritus and refuse and vast sweep of time's ravage upon many great cities diasporas of visible and invisible migrations, subsequent incursions that made their curious desperate mark on the faces of cities. A photo of the friend stares out squarely, defiant, she might say, knowing him, but perhaps not. More certain of the credibility of line and mark and point of puncture and fury. He was one to walk a lot, and comment upon the certainty of seething and disploding peoples, of people pulled into the maelstrom of survival, of them pushing and pulling, tug at this, what you say, string, a lifeline and back streets, places by water, melancholy survival deals that dealt a raw hand. He had traveled to the undersides of them indefatigably and lived in the interstices, watching those cities below her imagination. What had he seen? What he had seen below the imagination. He had seen odd delineations of fear and seething and disploding juxtaposed with mad delight of martyrdom. How implodes everywhere the ethos by any necessary means. He meant they were crowded like rats or like the circumpolar head people living under the sea, ghosts consisting only of a head, ghosts waiting to be buried off the killing fields of Srebrenica. 
darker districts outside Paris where the trouble they complain of arrives from. She thought of semaphores. He was trying to tell her something with his signals, with his codes and flags and where they might measure distress, could measure help them now, signal distress, distress. It was words, words only now, here, the ferry close by, within walking from their temporary shelter. He was one of the words only school, then turning words to movies those moving picture impersonating shadows, a moving picture school and movies, movies only. For you could tell in light, he would say, words, and he liked them dark, transgressive even. And what are you wishing on? I mean, working, working on, he asked, chewing on the mammal. It was like a hallucination. First, the object strewn about where they had arrived from, a book a map, quadrants discarded now, a sense of the shelter and the departing from it, map cast aside, they would try their luck. His caverns of cities, weight of them in him, in her mind now. They had sat with their lunch on another ferry, Lago di Como, animal bereft, lithic underpinnings. And the writing they both did took you to those other places, Waves on the Barosphorus, Istanbul, or Cambodia. They both wrote as if in the grip of a fever. Have you ever had the terrible dengue? Because of urgency? Survival? To describe the known world of any reach or stretch of imagination, the relative world of death and change, with the machinations of capitalism grinding away, charged and mysterious, Brute force and decimation, deracination, was her time irreversible? How many objects put to the test, taken apart, deconstruct them into their essential nature, compassion? Name outliving the person who carries it as with a book, name, identity, person. And have you heard, he asked, of the continent of de detritus? 100,000 pounds of petroleum plastic, twice the size of your continent. He was not American born. Churning in a vortex and the water animals under the intense burden of naming. How else we know them? By their sound? By their cry? Struggling in the serpent coils of plastic, mar marred, scarred. And she wondered, what animals must be sacrificed to the colonization of time, to the colonization of cities. Colonization of oceans, of planets. When science doesn't find something, she mused two possibilities towards him in her philosophy. The not finding of something that doesn't exist and the case of even though something exists, it can't be found. Do you know what I say of this? Not exactly the purpose. Past and future lives. Who is to say they don't exist, even if you cannot find them? And he, there is a world that is enough. Start here and purify. The external environment, start here. I began in cities. If there are sides, there is a center. The Milky Way has a center around which it revolves one billion light years across. She, Earth? You mean this book might be my center, she hoped, she prophesied, eager. Like to go there, he said, with you, he said. I'm picking up her thoughts like wind's cognition said again what is unmistaken and she i know him i know my friend by looking at him in my mirror of him and we rode then many miles when riding was a way of thinking investigating places people animals some miles of them tribes and all and in sympathy being magic ones 
poet ones, because we could ride out in another century and bring the past along, wondering what animal traps the what of what of animal cages and troops. We saw them embarking in the distance, what traps the troops and torture unseen. But you see it in the mind, most impossible a subject which becomes a trapped factor of life. Mere trappings, razor wires meant, torching meant, lynching and summoning animals to the hunt, dressed in their skins with gestures and sounds from the vibrating larynx, sing of becoming them, being them, eating them, animals of troubled descent, or sewing the star flower shirts by which the birds would be brought back to human shape. And on the slow ferry ride, they now boarded. She continued further her mantic dreams, how they'd come to her as voices. A previous universe might disappear and there is an eon of emptiness or eons of disintegration followed by eons of emptiness. And during the 20 intermediate eons of emptiness, there are particles of space and that's where you come in. She started in her cave mind, a particle of space. How come in? More voices. During the eons of arising, the basis for the arising of space, wind, fire, earth, water, are the particles of space. She started thinking about arising. She observed her breath on the window pane. They were inside the hull of the boat now. Within the cognitive source, which is all phenomena, arise forms that come from mental storehouses. Generating, generating compassion, such as vows. She thought about vows. Might she take them toward him, toward humanity? Those existing in actual situations, such astronomical and microscopic distances between things, those that are totally imaginary, such as those perceived in dreams and those from gaining control of the elements. As for those that come from storehouses, they cannot be seen by the eye. They are like our atoms. And he responded as if translating for her the notion of enlightenment. Form has shape and color. Color implies wavelength frequency on a spectrometer. First, you have the dissolution sequence, earth, water, fire, wind and space. Then the generation sequence, wind, fire, water, and earth. Externally, what elements develop out of its space? Externally, what elements develop out of is space and what they dissolve into is space. And they noted the categories together. And in upon this science, in upon the speaking, of these things, he became more forceful, as a geomancer might when listing impressions in a daybook. One, astronomy. Heave destiny. We are in the planetary observatory now, a new rock show on Mars, shiny silver pods in the sky, water and striation. How pass, wolf star, you say, if only. And are we star-crossed? Nuzzle me your elliptic. Took you to bed to make you more intimate. Compliance tucked into tamed speed. Repeat the 100,000 million stars in the Milky Way. And how many inside us? One of every million orbited by planets. 10,000 million planetary systems, this universe, or you do the math. 
Milky Way equals our axis, our mountain, Meru, and the mons of Venus lie atop this love. Two, geomancy. Turn here, sit down, here's a corner, face the sun, and listen, it's geo equals earth plus manticos equals of the soothsayer. Come in here now inside the square with me. Walked in on ceremonial festivities, flushed by long look of him. A tutor, whence have you come? What fourth corner? On head, feel a tracery of his mocking, darting eyes of blue veins, transparent skin, echo of a sad folk song. Coming round what mountain hay, coming round what mountain hay. The dragon currents of megalithic tombs, stone circles, where we stop to pick up the intonation invoked in Mad Men. Three, geography. Quadrants different as a leaf and flower, a single plant. The room's keen sensuality, you say, a vigor. Stand at the crossroads, poor Spartan you are. You say, a geomancer instructed you. A rough truce, these war years, spring over borders on a frown, among unconscious twigs and stones, parted lips. History as your field of inquiry, an open mouth, an illusion of what is so urgently required. Our sanity, secret journal, a boat, colored thread wrote this all down, peering over the side. I swam with the dolphins in the Vanda Sea. Four, eschatology, too scared as a child of neural complexity, be a child of illusion. It feels like the end in the ceremony. External environment and cosmos in which we live. Manity as some harbinger of the future as in they will rise. I went to Florida and spent some time in the warm water. They will rise indeed. Scribe a wide arc, mute glow of dawn the strange propulsion toward nuclear demise, which will alter all landscapes. Five, space particles. Discrete measures, not a fabric as once thought. They move between eons. They say discreetly, all universes are made of at at atomic particles. What is between the cycles of universes are empty eons. Galaxy contracts with all its metabolism into a black hole. During empty eons, the basic elements merely exist in potential form waiting. A space particle is a trace of the grosser elemental particles of a universe that is no longer joined together. As the soothsayer's coin drops to the ground, the space particle of a particular universe during its empty aeon is somewhat like a super condensed kernel of its matter from which its next phase of expansion grows. A black hole emits radiation as matter collapses into it and suggests a correlation between the life cycle of galaxies and of the universe a parallel process that operates during each person's experience of life and death. Each person's intelligence and sympathy is not without characteristic solemnity and joy. Six, outer wheel, all of the above plus culture and resistance. Seven. Inner wheel. Time cycles of breath taken by a person in a, in a day. 21,000 words or worlds. Other. 
other is what purifies or future is what purifies. Myth and story, but neurotransmitters. Yes, the fifth revolution, neuroscience. Off the wheel? Yes, a falcon gets off the wheel. Eight, phylogeny. How did ancestors come to be conscious in the evolutionary past? The neuron, its, eon cha its ion channels and chemical transmitters date back to the origins of multicellular life. And then she walks in, signaling system, system, signaling distress, distress. And she takes a measure of signals, her life a neurological drama, distress, distress. Nine, ontogeny. Brain of a four week embryo resembles that of a fish which swam 400 million years ago. Plasticity of synapses, thousands of billions of them, a waking state. Electricity tracks consciousness and you wanna know brain, the fleeting rhythms dance over the surface of, then shift coalitions of neurons in the cortex. You wanna know, you wanna badly know and add brain. Rhythms depend upon the activating system at the core of the upper brainstem and the thalamus. Chemicals it releases unlock the hemisphere to the information that bombards us from the senses. Why are we conscious? Why do we experience what happens in our brain? Why do we see colors, hear music, savor taste? Why aren't these processes enacted in darkness and silence as they happen without the body, without language? Why? A kind of lust happens, thinking, afference, and in a part of us, anything might go on. Why? 10, soteriology and apotheosis. If you could imagine or visualize the entire wheel of time mandala in a drop, the size of a mustard seed at the tip of one's nose, and see the whites of the eyes of 722 deities, all rooting for the enlightened you, the wide awake you, if you could imagine an enemy, who would it be? Visualize the whites of their eyes, don't shoot. Would it not be the proverbial enemy within you? Why did my brain incubate all those long years? Plotting its dominion and hunger for its own sweet entropy? Guarded in the night? Why would you not travel in this kind of visualization? Why not accomplish with 24 arms as you shift the ecliptic? And thus ended the list of the categories and then began the section of the binaries. And as she heard and noted them, another possibility arose of the mirror neuron passages that were to be her investigation through the second day and night. The light was fading on the horizon and they parted together at the dock. Singapore is it? Where next we will meet? Or India? Elephanta Isle perhaps? Another ride, time out of mind. And in her vision, she saw command, tablets, windows, binaries, she had seen this in imagination, the split of worlds, of voices, the poet's howl and the canis lupus brain, hidden categories within hidden categories, breathing together. Inner, day two, lentissimo. If you could imagine, said again, imagine knowing Elfkin, the imagine be in a kind of animal in knowing or resumed of knowing. If you might swell to it, imagining kind or heroic, but knowing need, in need, be needed in knowing of kind of, not, if not that kind, talking back and dream that feels urgent and a bond needed to be next to them and what they know, scientists, pilots, needed to be next to them, elders. She knows herself. She is counting coup, the sexual frenzy, sexual priority. She knows herself. She is counting coup. Everyone a partner in the dream. Everyone a wolf in the dream. In the body of large swimming animal. 
morph to empathy. She knows herself, counting sex cues. But to know toward yourself, inside or inside the nature of time, all the breaths in one day resumed, not manifest by chopped up existence, and a pest. Count what is gap between, but never calculating, not a pest. Take the measure, your winged chariot. Who can presume hero or heroine over plural heterodox, the max to go to locality, place, advantage, service, which is kind in thought of no beginning, stayed, stead, or person. Abandon knowing. You are not the gnosis of that word counting. She, she is, is standing, standing tall, tall, stood up on a leg. leg. She, she is standing tall, came together, together upright, upright, all the personalities in person, person to stand up, stand up tall. She, she takes, takes the worried look off her face. face. She locks it up in a music box. She folds it up, fragile skin, in the music box. Tomorrow, Tomorrow the, the thick skin, skin she wears, a fur, fur maid, will show the day, show the day, shows the day. Person that could move, resuming identity. Person instead of and out of mind, instead of condition, action, fraught as conscious. I would be hurried now. I would not crawl, but by st by but stand i would not crawl by but stand urgent not tarry person and of all standing tall safe in metabolism no end first not world not sun not something that might go out jari and sulci mollifies her heuristic sense of person her brainscape show the day shows the day do, do not no slaughter, slaughter. Do, do not, not presume, presume. Do, do not presume, presume to slaughter. slaughter. She, she lives for emotions. emotions. She lives for emotions. Her, Her passion is not an analytic mind. mind. Or his shapes in the gray matter, the white thinking resides, you say, in gray. I am the doctor or I am the glee of all your evolution. As person with smaller brain, body just the right size or moxie to sound it in steep hills and deep valleys, literally held in throat toward an object. If you could imagine of anyone of being kind then, that it might be resumed the future as stuff in perpetuity, give over to a way to operate, navigate how you might do, no slaughter, choose and be kind, draws down a bath, could walk and place a cup down about there for you. Her passion is appearance and real cloudy water and the red maples reflected. Cloudy water, cloudy water and red maples reflected. Time leaking. Drop, drop by, by drop. drop. Her time, her regenerative regener time, abandoning her time. Then someone else for them Will covers he you her? with a soft cloth. Will he take her? Will he hold her? Will he Could take her? something out and move other utensils around and drop by drop, secrets of battle drop by drop. Draw a deity in the sand, she. She does no slaughter. Childhood fear. In the dirt now terrified. Fear her not thinking externality anymore says again fear of animal slaughter herself makes no blunder today of that alights in externality placed in relative cosmos you say conditioned in a kind of cartouche there's no way to blunder slaughter daughter of, daughter of mercy daughter of light Haltingly, because cosmos is free and disintegrating, how could you ever contain the child in any war-torn, all of them land that is no father, that is again? Will she have her? Again. Will she have her? Again, father's revenge and suffering. Will the she The suffers. Her? Mother's. Drop. By how? 
taking a seat again, every day's relational increments. Write something down to resume and counter then. All attack, small, medium, large. On scapes and species down under, you are one of them. Eyes, eyes, everything has them, everything. Born a fish, you would. I am an animal. In water. Animal everywhere, everywhere. How sensible. Dear big oil, get out of here. That the environment agrees with your rebirth. She, only a tongue, agree. Dear big oil, out of the picture. I'm performing at you, out, out. We're watching you, big oil, out, All out. Sense of suffering. She is standing in performance. And in eternity, cycles of revenge. Standing tall on legs, performing, saying, this is about big oil. Dart, the arrow of time. Brush out, up out. Microfilaments. The musculature of voice. She is counting coup, time, increments. Time, span of decay. Then a golden age, say again. Memory, lifetime, Once memory. ever absent. Something to conjure and then resume. A lifeline. Better that big oil be out. Would see pretend to see, would pretend then see the other way around, pretending in externality to ever see them, other them, the other way around, presumes in imagination. She adrift. In this try, if resumed, a practice to get off the wheel, try. Beams of light. Not absent in any absented degree, sweat and puff. Not tarry as sophisticating emotions, tarry. Day, no doubt. Decisive for. She gestures, understands, performs. No doubt presumed that you take it, never immune. She performs all manner of speakings. In urgency. Welcome to her brain. In the aboriginal memory. Architecture. How presume. Welcome to her evolution. To doubt. She will stand in. Astronomy. For female sociality. How many light years back or? Neocortex flowing. Forward. Could you go flip the eclectic? More planets than you think in that big brain of yours. Shadowy. And would there be consciousness lurking there? Yeah. One planet might hide another, or one's planet might hide another. Refer again to dawning of it, of me, of day, of hour, of self, or planet. Square will be empty, corner stacked, stocked by intruders. She is grasping objects now. She can End do of vow it. And she can grasp. Show. Come Study in, her barbarian. We welcome you, Celt or Etruscan. Grasslands. Open grasslands. Resume to happen in presumption. A femme fatale holding, now resumed in diacritical markup. She is soothing with her breathing. Space, yes, perceptively she charged. Soothing, she is the idea soothing. of me. She is soothing with her breathing. Announces. Fine control she is all that is well. Mm. How old the planet might be, me. said again. How long taking back to it, talking extra back to it herself. Extra nerves mm. in the thoracic spine. And talking back the empathy she in a stride. Is Ocular performing and standing. She, the notable pronoun, always of itself, spine. heard longer than uncertainty, certainly, to change a world, defense against it, her trying, and push against it. Open water, <clears throat> open water. Try on. Now swimming in Autonomous could agree. Say again, fictitious me. 
or taking time in time illusory in dilation. Arising from vowels one might imagine, notice and resume duration. If you could imagine soon, well, soon a vowel, thin. ooh, well, sound, I'd wait how for you to be, to have been in universe again, arriving soon. Does soon stop in the brain? Back to the Is detention cave. like memory and imagination to the locked cave. in? Or detection slightly presumptive, more enduring? Bison and aurochs, bison and aurochs. And circular locked out? I'd say so, presumptively. Belief stance, belief stance. I would in elevation hot your act up or Oprah hit it pigments running and, flowers, and exist and separately, flowers, hot like, with vowels, the bodies, all the tribal friends, quantitized into deeper, distinct cronans. Duration, duration. One is now past, past maze and tense. Torpor is past. past. You, you can, can go, go on, on no long. longer. All, All the tribal friends, friends past the soldier's tent, psyops of the dark world, world entropy of another. another. She, she controls, controls fire. fire. She controls fire. fire. Moving down, down of past, past, past dawns to, to choose from a Neanderthal dream. And, and physical, physical objects, objects may move, move toward, toward future metabolism, metabolism and slaughters. How, how many, how many brains to slaughters? How many? And might you never end criminals to slaughters? And to slaughter, and to slaughter. Entropy, listen, and again, wait. Slow down. In what a it place is to be human, her no bigger brain, fears. her bigger brain. It's then a song a for her bigger flow. brain. She is cool, As in counting cow. The membrane cool was oiled like a shell. In a bigger significant serpentine brain. In the ear. Oracular. Magnificent. Actually grown beyond, moved beyond occipital bun. And could be in topic. Projecting mid-face, globe-shaped rear of skull. Implicated in the presumption of cornea on lens. Moved beyond, gone beyond. And within a hundred thousand neuron cells. Gone. As in the center resumed to be lotus, which is weightier than time, stellate, basket, granular, chandelier, Manatee, contracting again. Or the dreaming snakes that draw breath, resume the mind brain. Take you to an awakening. To make this day breath. Sight and bite you back into life. How I know together with my CEO, my cum, and prosynthian fictitious even, or lemur I know, infer my CEO. I make love, therefore I know, and can explain hot love, and again, resume together with, I know together with my hot love. How sweet language enables this. Dire world crossing the straits. Say again. Now. Ancient and fragile language. Dire world crossing the straits. Ennobles this. Now. And in mirror self-recognition. Dire wolf world crossing the straits. Lemurian who might in quality resemble you. Taiga, tundra, deserts, forest, mountains. In hotter tone. Mountains, forests, deserts, tundra. Who will obviate torture, who in a rod of deep can do, can do this. Tell time, this if we love. Who will stop torture? We're to love and that would be plenty. How old and what conditions prey upon each other. Terrible world. Irreversible Kali Yuga. 
where we eat each other up, weep rage. If one then with quartz like radiance in the eye were to gaze. And wear you the keys and the lock. To fit. In high old shaman time we're resuming. To fit. Is always the way back around to start over, resume, resume. What view from nowhere is to ask? Tune the thigh bone for eschological. She is giving you a dark look in time. This creation myth, she is the first to generate heroic, kind reality. Experience death. With stimulation of phantom world around its women who have been ill used around its stepping stone set in white animal study, which has philology sand around its instruments. Stepping stone set in white sand. Remind her of the Milky Way. Alter one genome and you are in consciousness assumed or presumed to say this a particular style and color. Just get that way, animal, okay? A cloth being resumed as a pinching, impinging upon space, resolved to be empty and wrung, or gap between a world system, how implicate manatee, replicate, duplicate, I know together with a vision, any idea of kind ones, to live always with the kind animal ones and resumed, as clear as water or sky, which is mysterious, dark, gazing at the situation in general as it laughter carried, folded all around, on the autumn air, laughter carried, and coiled you up in its dark plan, on the autumn air, in a measuring rod of deep time as coiling and spiraling out, uranium-tipped danger could sing the end of you coiled, or slaughters, would they be visible, sing of them. She is stomping in the fierce, lest they be forgotten. Urgency of now, stomping in the fierce, urgency of now. Can you not feel the noise slaughtering, the hello of it? Hello, you horrible slaughters. Perception of the world around you is made a full slaughter. She is a spectral shift. She is a spectral shift. Reflecting sound, mortar round, echo location. Moving away from the known universe. Not seen, not felt, nor acted upon in salvage, savage, slaughter. Gamma rays burst, gamma ray burst. But said go, go away, so oblivious. She is standing, performing. Ignorance, can't look now. In a galaxy, in a galaxy. If you could imagine refracted, say again, colloquially. Seven billion light years away, seven billion light years away. A better time, under guises of ordinary solar day. But justice, justice, now rage about it, now rage about it. Justice, just as it is, is not justice. Apprehension, unfold, implode, threshold of language saying kindly, I will not kill an animals with senses. We do not possess it all. Not kill them too? Soon my neuron is deciding to fire or not to fire. Choice by what mechanism? Corny empathy? Not wholly passive recipient of external action resumed to be acculturated. Your dense neuron Scott star. Again then. She is standing in for all the animals. Resumed. She is counting coup. Spurn or spawn. How many animals to make love to? On empathy. How many animals to love? Get you on this wheel to get you off it. Tear my tongue from my mouth, if you dare. Medita metabolism calibrated. I am standing in for all of them. Random and thicket and image and eye. 
terabytes and gigabytes. Would you scorn? Could you? Whatever stars went to their graves have been just dead before earth and sun were born. Walk away or measure the cal calibration. Trying it on, there has got to be more than one universe in this fucking precious dark pathological time. Expand the portfolio that already includes submarines, tanks, heavy artillery weapons like the howitzer. Crossing the white sand to walk upon the water's edge, brittle stalks of autumn grass, brittle stalks of autumn grass or do not do this ever again. She performs to measure the way. How wise is that doing? Performs to measure that animal way. You will roast in hell. Criminal is that, Bent roast in hell, a mindset. Bent under her chest, close to the heart. What would that criminal and that is that? And human brain, will you lift up to that? My wolf pulling back his ears in suspicion. Bent under chest standing or performing sounding. My ice age survivor of the late Pleistocene. My narrow eyed lover. My wolf going up and down the path of the Milky Way known as Wolf Road. My extirpated wolf in these parks roaming the ponderosa and mixed conifer forest. In the dream, I'm holding my cush of grass, my grass of pristine awareness. She says this, counting all the atoms in her day, all the breaths in a day. Temporal lobe, temporal lobe. Every day, what kind of courage? Every day, what courage? Bursting brain. Bursting brain. All breaths in a day. When did consciousness come on the scene? What is chasing you? No need to hide. And in the dream, it was the wolves all the way down. Wolf pack thrashing and gnawing at the corpses of other animals. Cannibal haven, misunderstood. A small splash a chill, an eye caught, trapped, stare, quick, shift, metallic <laughs> shimmer, cloaks and hoods of the imposters, rent apart by wolves. I am a youth with golden symbols dancing. Then one turns to me as in blame. Would you come to my rescue? Reliable humans, would you? Notice animals dressed as humans now, imposter humans, strewn out on the charnel ground, clothed, battered, and trying to be animal again. Scratch wolf eyes off the facade of human. Images of many ravaged sites flash by as if there is atavistic memory. Creation of a perceptual world of death and destruction. Long Daddy. evolutionary gestation of death and destruction. Daddy. We stop to observe my companion always with me now. Cougar head snapped and entrails ripped out and spread all around those parts not eaten. Cougar cubs eviscerated, killer instinct or survival. What can we learn from the predatory nature of other animals to surround the bison, down the cattle? The other way around, you said, we came first, so like them. We in our sweet smelling round realm, so like them, pack of wolves, and all breaths escape to exhale in the continued plight of wolves, loyal in their pack abode, cunning, bright eyed ones, wolf skin, ride over me tonight, and manatee. You can't mix a human monster ever enough up to aid the manatee. Surely our conscious plans have precursors in animal brains. Construct a primate of objects, nail, tooth, and claw, space, and time. Start here, now. Now represent your representations in the symbolic code of language, manatee, humanity, 
and run your hand along a restless spine. It was a time of fossil fuel priorities, of precious business time. That's what they'll say about us centuries hence. It was a busy, get on with it, business time. So better get on with it time. They fucked us all over and they're greedy, get over it time. That's what they'll say about us. What were they thinking, stupid fuckers? It was commodification, fun hog time, time modification time, got on with time. They killed, we, we killed time. They fucked us over in our future time. We'll surely be more stressed in time. That's what they'll be saying. That's what they'll say. They got on with it, saying about us going nowhere, but going down and all of us with them. What were they thinking in their selfish minds? Us, us. That's what they'll say about us generations hence. How living then hence without so many animals then, they fucked the world over in their sweet, avaricious time frame. That's what they'll say about us. Those stupid fuckers, they say they let the animals die. They let the plants die. They killed the air. They killed the water. They killed each other. They killed language. I did humdrum paleolithic where we would talk in sweet time notches well that's over where the fuck did that ever evolve to then along 20,000 years of keeping time once keeping it for all and moving it time forward and it the art forward and it humanity forward and now they want to kill it really they killed it then a long rim of Babylonian, rim of Egyptian, 5,000 years once ago, such progress, they kill all that too, stupid fuckers. Then but now my solar day, my lunar month, my solar year, my speed, I inherited from them. What time is it now? And we resumed our talk after these excessive outbreaks, discussing the nature of calibration how different times give the peculiarities and particulars of people and praxis and place and thought systems and become their own zones. In this, we spoke of lustrations and the architectures of spiritual places, of constructing mandalas with colored sands and the women who dance uh, the precipice of eclipses, performance and ritual under arches, pillars that delineate the way to move us as a chorus might open atriums. They're moving into the augur space, the place of frequent animal sacrifice. We're mere side aerial time, two passages of the mean sun time, he cautioned, and that is relative. Both, both, he cautioned further. It's quite unconscionably relative. That doesn't explain, I protested, the way we brutalize time. You may want to consider how an anomalistic year is the interval between two successive passages of the earth through the perihelion. And this might be the year the four-legged animals take fright and hide, I added. Julian and Gregorian is your solar time. This is your basis. Remind you again, you need a relative time frame. Start here. And what of animals on desperate clocks of survival and flood, famine, ice caps melting? What of them? Polar bears exhausted, swimming over a hundred miles to shelter. Of course, go mad with it. But you might consider the notion of proleptic time brought forward how one might use devices. In manipulation of time, trick time, perhaps, or the first Sunday after first full moon marking Muhammad's immigration to Medina, July 25th, 622 Common Era, called thus Anno Hegeriai. Put power there called Kalens, that power from Kaleri to call out, Kalens, Kalens, and then people will die or mythologize for a control of time. As when the Antikythera mechanism organized the ancient Greek calendar in the cycle of the Olympiad. So we are in mid poem with a new moon, new moon calling us out, he laughed, in the forced monopolies of expendable time. Roman, Celts, Babylonians, Hebrews, Copts, 284 before the Common Era, Zoroastrians, 289 before the Common Era, Ethiopians, 7 Common Era, 
will honor you here, home in its own time, an uncommon era. Remember when a barley loan could be measured out to the lender at the next year's threshing floor? me. Hello. And the Himba people in Akamba, Namibia, say when the thunderstorms start and the leaves grow from the ground, that's how we know it's the new year and the word for year is rain. Look up, it's raining now. And looking down, you might recognize the El Segundo blue butterfly who lives precariously in the shadow of the Los Angeles International Airport 2009 CE and consider the severe declines of coast Hosakia in your perigenations and the lotus for moisium, for moisus, that supported this life, most evident, and old ponds gradually undergo a process known as eutropification, which leads to dry land, 2050 CE, and gaze down again, a beautiful yellow namimbus outlines the shimmering pale blue butterfly in its pale blue butterfly time lotus blue butterfly in its rare coastal bog habitat. The Delhi Sands flower loving fly enters here, your mid poem life. This is a test of the emerging alert system to challenge your existential day. Sing manatee. Manatee, you'd better praise all you can, he said, all the trembling day. And passing before her captivity, reiterating a chant of manatee, I began. The manatee is found in shallow, slow-moving waters. The manatee moves in estuaries, moves in saltwater bays. The manatee in moving moves gently. The manatee is to be found in canals and coastal areas. The manatee is a migratory animal. The manatee is gentle and slow moving. The manatee moves in slow moving rivers slowly. The manatee is completely herbivorous. The West Indian manatee has no natural enemies. The manatee has no natural en enemies, but unnatural man. The manatee is constantly threatened by man unnaturally, man with his boats and plastic and attitude. The manatee, manatee often drowns in canal locks of man, man who makes no concession to manatee. The manatee dies in flood control structures. Man who makes no concession to manatee, nor cares of manatee life, manatee fortune. The manatee dies in collision with watercraft. Man who does not protect the manatee. What steward of the earth is this unnatural man? Man who makes no concession to manatee. The manatee dies with the ingestion of fish hooks. Man who unnaturally makes no concession. The manatee dies from litter and monofilament lines. Man who is rank in attitude has no use for manatee. The manatee dies entrapped in, in crab trap lines. The manatee dies from loss of habitat claimed by man. The manatee is maimed by man. The manatee could be aided by man. Man, oh, aid the manatee. Man, come to the manatee heart. 
A manatee calf is born every two to five years. A manatee gestates for a year in the manatee womb. 8,400 miles of tidal waters could be for the manatee. 11,000 miles of rivers and streams could be for the manatee. 10,000 miles of canals, would they all be for the manatee? The manatee has more gray matter in the brain than man. The manatee is perhaps thinking archivally deeper than man. Ancient days of manatee, so many thousands of years. Manatee mind. What is the mind of manatee? The manatee has no natural enemies. The manatee is completely herb herbivorous. The metabolism of the manatee is slow, moves slowly. The manatee moves in estuaries, moves in saltwater bays. The manatee moves in slow moving rivers. The manatee is gentle. The manatee offspring nurses for up to two years. The manatee learns everything from the manatee mother. The manatee mothers and offspring sing to one another. The manatee have large ear bones chirps, whistles, squeaks of the manatee. The manatee in moving slowly moves gently. Oscillations of the manatee moving between the manatee ears, ears of the manatee mother and manatee offspring. Manatee are our sirenians and live in the house of the sirens. Where are the human sanctuaries for the manatee? Manatees, mermaids, sirens, singing, move slowly. The manatee mother and calf so bonded. Female manatee bonded with her, just one manatee offspring. There have been times when they come up out of the water and the light has been such that they did look like the head of a person. In the ritual, they said, cast your lot in here. In the ritual, you were meant to be protector. You were meant to be a progenitor. You were meant to rise from waves. Mother, mother, om manati hum. And standing in the nimbus of that genus of strange species. As if saying, this is the mind of Manatee. Manatee reminded me that multiple hydra-headed universes, all fractals and in chaos, including more cycles, will emerge. Formation, stabilization, disintegration, emptiness. Make it work, give it a shape, let it come apart. Start over constantly. Formation, stabilization, disintegration, emptiness. Some of your friends will be there waiting. The winds of karma provide the impulse for a particular universe to evolve that comes from the collective karma of the clear light strife gone mind of other beings who remain present during empty magma eons in between universal autumnal epochs. And these karma winds provide the impulse for a specific birth to occur. And speaking further, she went on, Manatee, fresh from her initiation into the mysteries of time. If in the grammatical structure of language, you may speak of iris, nostril, dazzle, or across the dew-laden clover speak, hear passion flutter, look down, and when looking, listen for the cry of the manatee, resilient, 
rustling void within or if, and then because of, and when the world becomes treacherous, listen again. It may be lucid if what is meant is immediate, transparent, dangerous. You have unmediated resolution or silence. You have perhaps a few happy vignettes, vigilant of aspects of if and when you admitted it, a life a life and struggle of everyone broken and heartbreak and the animals experience that too, heartbreak. So restrained at admitting it, unlike humans crying all over town. And what kind of anchor then is time? If in the grammar of sound, it's always revolving around what is the time of manatee or what sound caught in waves and manatee larynx? A distinction distinction between past, present, future, then what is in relation here? And how time strides concentrically. And inside time, an example of trance, of samadhi. We are in a kind of trance, said Man Manatee, that seems to occur outside time. Then trace, belief, form, abscond, and you become the witness of your impermanence. And again, you, in, you evolve around a distinction of past, present, future. How you will sound distant, wail through layers of time, and simultaneously that which has no name sounds, then a lilt. Music of the spherical's flux refers to motion or an uncertainty principle or intermediacy, intermediacy, how to merge quantum mechanics with general relativity. You have your time organ in the brain. Fret, grieve, worry, expect, and experience nostalgia. Mind never turns off nostalgia for a full moon April 15th. Each stream of continuity being individual. And if it were not certainly like that, assuredly like stable, that thing like that, just as it wasn't in being a kind of contaminated pleasure. If when you would wonder stability, retrograde now to direct your attention and if the mind could say, like the radio is always on, whether or not it receives or is in gap or frequency down, it is on, on relative reclaimed space, or on absolutely, on and on, or on of certainty, on the lid of certainty, or on the inner lid as it is putting a lid on uncertainty, its inner workings, mechanisms, etc. An uncertainty as in a place to dwell, certainly asking another story before the talk of barbarian hordes, which are your own demons. What are the implications in a circular time frame of such talk? Is it loose? Is it cheap? Is it responsible for a closed system? Is it misunderstood for its logical greed and despotism? Who, after all, will control the energy who, after all, will be the master of the resources? Hyperconnectivity begets mimesis, begets hyper-empowerment, or as we die out. And we resumed our conversation, what had seemed ancient a long time ago, to now be embarking on a new life, a new style of poetry filled with yearning for the animal, but empty of animals, remembered 
only in our naming of things after them, cars and trucks and teams and products that sap their mana. Meeting after Holocaust, meeting after we had loved, been lovers, traveled to ends of some version of earth, after we had been each other's own mothers. He bowed to me, old friend, I shall never forget you, said, and confident of the future, a difficult place. Will you know me when you see me, know me as what became a female body? I paused, amused, and he spoke to me thus, said of his lemurhood, as he called it, a Borosian space imitating the voice of Captain Mission, who looks after and cares for lemurs. And if we are not extinct, what we have learned from them and the many other ancient animals, like evolution of a female-driven social system in primates, and male deference is a social construct, not a matter of size or strengths. Lemur is derived from the Latin word meaning spirits of the night. Lemurs are nocturnal with large reflective eyes and wailing cries. All lemurs, pygmy slow loris, crowned lemur, fat-tailed dwarf lemur, black and white ruffed lemur, gray gentle lemur, ring-tailed lemur, aya aya slender loris, slow loris, blue-eyed lemur, lesser bush baby collared lemur, golden crown sifaka, have a tapetum, a reflective layer over the retina that causes their eyes to shine back light. Lemurs evolved before anthropoids living during the Eocene epoch 55 million years ago. The first monkey dates to 45 million years ago, the ape 35. Madagascar broke from Africa 160 million years ago. Did lemurs travel to Madagascar on clumps of vegetation? Lemurs are the closest living analogs to man's ancient primate ancestors. Lemurs differ cognitively in the development of the associated associative areas of the brain. Lemurs have scent glands on their feet that leave odors on the surfaces they cross. Lemurs have a heightened sense of smell. Lemurs are arboreal, spending much of their time in trees and bushes. Lemurs have large bushy tails that wave in the air to communicate. Their tails help them balance when they leap from tree to tree. Lemurs have a good grip for hanging onto trees and branches. Lemurs are well-groomed and use their teeth as a comb. Some lemurs are hermetic, live alone, awake and active at night. Others live in large stable groups and in fluid associations. Lemurs show female dominance. Lemur babies are carried in their mother's mouths. Lemurs are usually vegetarian, primarily eating leaves and fruit. As they move from flower to flower, lemurs transfer pollen on their foreheads. All lemurs are found in Madagascar and the neighboring Comoros Islands. The forests of Madagascar are being destroyed at an alarming rate. 50 different species of lemur are critically endangered. 80% of their habitat has been destroyed. Lemurs are hurt by new weapons and deforestation. Lemurs are the most gravely endangered group of primates in the world. I was saying man's inhumanity to beasties and then that thought swept across continents and consciousness where we all have been. Reykjavik, Denmark Strait, Nook, notable for an arc. How conscious these places seem in an arc. And thought of you, shape-shifting mammal, 
love of you, cascades of it, needing you warmer in armor, garbled underwater, endangered. So this is your time. This is it. A cage? Quite a bit quieter in a cage, for I am sentient too. Leaf consciousness, said the leaf, and won't you write this in atomic time? Yes, my leaf, in actual first poem time. When you picked up the Aboriginal axe, you'd made it, constructed it, how clever to be human. Proverbial axe, it does sacrifice of animals and scratches in wet sand and building of shelter with chisel too. Hewn characters in the mind, arms and legs that are brisk strokes of language. Dendritic, the shapes of our neurons, your first language, gamma, insight, anthropomorphic. In pleasant jaguar language, you are thinking. In the tongue of the wapiti, shape of leaf like a bodhi flame. Paw of the dreamer, who is stalker of prey, aspirant, let's say, for the kill, blur of words as they tick by, quizzical, hairy appendages, morphology all by itself. Between us, so many go down. Does it ever end? Slaughter, does it? And gone ravaging, gone back to the sea without legs, I, a mermaiden, be before you, seaweed standing in my hair. Come to my house of the sirens, morph the sea and land and buck the boundaries. Think always of you, tropical, atavistic, you wonder what it takes to survive person. It's a different language below, a coastline and a manatee, limited by the human realm heavy breathing, inside what, could, what I could say to stranger, gaze at manatee a good hour, comedic like you see on 50s TV reruns, tell me telepathically what she knows about wounds, patience, endurance, familial love, communicates in sonic system, signal, distress, distress, she knows, Distress, distress. The aquarium deserted now. This is the song at dusk I write in this notebook. Strange skin, not quite seal, not quite dolphin, inchoate texture-like, something you forget, something you didn't even see the first time, old shoe, sentient being with others in watery caves, lights with motive and mind up a ladder, mouth moving, quixotic mind, quick flick, who are me, who haunt me, Please haunt me. Summoned by the dream, the kusha grass instructs. You might say a kind of ceremony. Gather up these nightmares, this in a public space where many minds meet and pass around the objects of this dream. A blindfold, a crystal, a card, with a bodhisattva upon it, gather them up and making an offering, all the bhikkhus going down on their knees for this. In this world marked out by the augur, interstices between living and dead, an initiation on the nature of time and of continuity in a dark time. Mean world, humanity, Dream world, manatee, secret world, om mani padme, 
Manati hum, om mani, humanity padme hum. The center of reference becomes movement in this ritual. They had bordered. They had bordered. They had boarded another boat for the sake of riding. Keep riding. And her companion had perceptibly changed. Hard to describe now, morphing into more of a voice, high pitched, what you might hear in the bardo were you to listen, because sounds had made a kind of syncretic power between human and animal and force in the palm. All the sounds in the poem, all the breaths in one day, delirium, dream, hallucination. She was inside, completely inside. I said I had hoped to see it all. Stop the question. Beginning and end of humanity. She'd seen it all once. We walked wider. We joked about weaponry on Mars. Someone would land a kind of Nautilus, tripping the wire there, blue water, the whole house, as in an astrological one, a fool's cap, an appetite, an aperitif, And if he, she were a furry animal, what kind of animal would he, she be? He, she was an elder and I hadn't seen it all incidentally. Zutzamen, Entolen. Hmm. What did these words mean? Rooms and trolls. We're worn, want to bet? Humanity is worn thin, he, she says. It oughtn't be. Hominid species distributed through time. Homonyms through time. Honoris causa in time. It was the elder poet speaks from the dead visitation again. And what was the teaching? That the dead speak and point their gaze on us, that they sometimes speak in funny categories. And when you say time, what do you mean? An act of change. And when you say real, what is this? Something to ride off of. Come again? Liberation. From? From cycles of time. Enter like a child. First, water, as if from a mother splashing, as if after a child's birth. Next, bind the hair locks of the child when she is ready. Three, pierce the child's ears for ornaments, for ribbons in the ears. Four, you might be laughing and talking. Five. The child enjoys five sense objects. Shell for touch. Smell a lily. Taste this cube of fruit. A plastic horn sounds. A mirror reflects back at you. Six. Naming earth, air, fire, water, and all the elements. Seven. Mantra singing songs like the bubbling up of water. And then what? You are ready to enter. What? Ready to enter what? Your own life. And the participants studied the internal ceremonial code Analogy is universe, is current had tangled, is esoteric venture, is menagerie prescience, is teacup, a strange desire, is tabulation, 
is restitution, is once a meaty cork, is any part her nutrient, is recondite, is porta principalis sinistra, is phenomena meme text, is verbal oral clarity, is metabolism, is calibrated spiral cortical, synchrony, striatum, integral, melatonin, is my light of new millennium, don't abandon me here, is last chance estuary pineal break, is nucleus cycle pigment blood, is wavelength light pause, is circadian clock. Circadian, circa, plus, dies. As when I feel the pulse late at night on McDougal Street, looking to the animals there, Patty's cats, Ed's stoical and sartorial gym, Chloe's Lita, a gentle wolf dog, and the rats below. Our pets resolve to abandon revolution, maintaining their oscillations, frequencies, rhythm, rhythms and activity, leaf movements. Daily cycles of dark and light are your dictators who dictate when many physiological processes that operate on 24 hour cycles will be most and least active. Lie down with the wolf and sleep now, your own neighborhood. Secret, day three. Brain tracks fluctuations in light with the help of ganglion cells in the retina of the eye. A pigment in some of the cells, melanopsin, probably dictates light, leading the retinal ganglion cells to send information about brightness and duration to the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the brain. Then the suprachiasmatic nucleus dispatches the information to the parts of the brain and body that control circadian processes. Events lead to the pineal gland to secrete melatonin. In response to daylight, the suprachiasmatic nucleus emits signals that stop another brain region, the paraventricular nucleus, from producing a message that would ultimately result in melatonin's release. After dark, however, the suprachiasmatic releases the break allowing the paraventricular nucleus to relay a secret melatonin signal through neurons in the upper spine and the neck to the pineal gland. Long plane ride. It helps transition from joy to sorrow or other way around. Interval timer. According to one model, the onset of an event lasting a familiar amount of time, the boiling of an egg, the yellow traffic light flicking on for four seconds, the cry of orgasm, the amount of time it takes after you ring the buzzer for a friend to respond, and then the response mechanism unlocking the door you walk in, the time between the response that triggers the door and when it clicks open, I mean... The train leaves the station on time and will arrive exactly as predicted. We are in Kyoto now. Your start button is activated. The onset of this event, whatever it may be in all the lives you have, Past, present, future, announces we are in urgent Kyoto Accord time now. Time frame, 
expectation, hope or fear could result in a particular subset of cortical nerve cells firing at different rates and momentarily acting together neurons of the substantia nigra to release a burst of the signaling chemical dopamine. Both signals then impinge on the spiny cells of the striatum, which proceed to monitor the overall patterns of impulses coming in from the cortical cells after those neurons resume their various firing rates. Because the cortical cells act in synchrony at the start of the interval, the subsequent patterns occur in a sequence every time and take a unique form when the end of the familiar interval is reached. At that point, the striatum sends a times up signal through other parts of the brain to the decision-making cortex. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency is purportedly developing a neural implant to remotely control the movement of sharks. Sharks' unique sense will be exploited to provide data feedback in relation to enemy ships' movement and underwater explosives. To see and feel everything a shark does, understand the cortical plasticity of the brain. The shark's natural ability to sense a weak magnetic and electric field is of particular interest to the military. Shallow, near shore region, seaweeds live swept forth or in limpid swoon. A signal cannot reflect or elaborate upon, yet splendor there. Come to be there, mollusks, and naming them come to be there in them. Swept down, come up to your evolution, then in them. Love for their not ambulatoriness, sea snails and periwinkles, chitons and limpet, Move as you do, inkling of vibration, and the common power haliotosis iris. Become metabolism, a wish driven so deep it relishes the contrast for human suck. Motion humming, recursive. Are minds possible without language? Luster not only for an archival eye, residual depth plea to the wild. One day arrived at chromosomal time, or a water plant hypothesis called nuclear. Spy, spy, hunt, hunt. And you are once again a scare tactic, a smoke out tactic. And I ran to break up a concept that will never break in them as other, while language reflects mind structures, strictures on ways to be in world. Are enemies aerial or terrestrial? Not only data you crave, but darker pundit plans to know power or else benthic animals, bottom living ones will go farther down, attached to rocks and stones and sediments, get food that way. Filtering tiny planktonic animals or plants out of surrounding water, sponges, sea mosses, rock and mud oysters, or pipi and toheroa, amphidesma ventricosum do this. What sound in your fleshly name does this? Are you mere material, altricial, sexy, half cooked or cocked, made to be shattered by a bomb? Are you fit in wit? And naming them thus come to be neural endgame. In gesture, 
three bows or blows, rod and thought pattern flight, three associations, a creep, secret, deplete, or larynx, mouth and tongue, defensive. Yet, citizen, are you? Speak out. And that which destabilizes meaning, my lover, is not you. And then there are the hidden colonies, multitudes of separate animals, all epifauna in this eerie survival game. Neglect your sonar sexuality, neglect that cluster burst of sound. Listen for echo off a ship's hull that would deliver useful knowledge. Rethink the mouth of your disembodiment, Ritual for the dead flint axes, fire, hedgehog, depth charge, launchers, anti-submarine missiles exist only in a land of short sentences. Lethal entrance or keyboarding. We live with 400 crude oil and toxic spills. Prudhoe oil fields just 30 miles west of Arctic refuge adjusts intensity to the sound of refuge. Deluge, subterfuge, death fugue. 4,900 feet of deep hunting you'd like would argue for the beaked whale. Deep water echinoids resting there where she moves. Antithesis, mitigated circumstance or resistance. Oldest living seafloor animals ever saying something excludes her or them. Reckon round longer than you'll ever be. Microbe time. Them consummate mouth breathers, breeders, hover and suck up the air, direction of all possible space, of all possible global breathing. They are below, especially below and more below. Say, the coral reef is noisy today. It is a tendentious maze. If standing, a windy tundra, always thinking about what the tundra used to be, it was the sea. If standing and swimming, say, all about microbes again in a mitochondrial tundra world, a continental divide. Look toward the Pacific and chant an open air aria or small song to choral, its inalienable right to exist and nod to the East Coast, its shame, where they run your life from a dirge and move below and more below, my lover. You are late before sunup. You'd better move upstream soon. I asked, did the universe exist before the beginning of time, an impulse of antithesis, or is the bracket of matter phantom? Transport and wandering, the movie run back, metabolically speaking toward the Pleo Pleistocene, the atavistic wolf dream rubs into your DNA. Everyone, a flake of time in the right brain hemisphere, my archival time and language time and philosophical time and control and time all synchronized. Well, on the left, I am becoming dexterous and am continuing the mapping, the territory from my poem's domain. And speaking now out of a Boca landscape in a higher pitch, any rock that holds an edge will do. We had stopped now, waiting for the edge of the drug to descend. You said, come on in, into the mandala of, of RNA, yours, mine, mapping your humanity to what purpose? Indeed, you said, as we approach the shore, you starting to shapeshift more decidedly now with some urgency and in philosophical time, what is our purpose? What is humanity's purpose in philosophical time? Habits that are an agitation in philosophical time will wear out in philosophical time. Fondness for the struggle in philosophical time won't wear out in physical in philosophical time. To rumble did please us in philosophical time, but we were tempted to retaliate against philosophical time. Shoulder on readiness in philosophical time and soldier on emissary for the temperament in philosophical time injustice. 
everywhere and in twilight of philosophical time empires were rising and falling in philosophical time fossils that might indicate salvation or starvation appeared revelatory in philosophical time chittens brain case afantova gora on the yenisei river we were happy to see them in philosophical time the end of one civilization could pop back in more resilient in philosophical time a bitter touch a philosophical time to touch it dead history how does it do it itself deadly to be that history quite dead in philosophical time what did it ever learn from itself or from description of its own change and ineptitude to strangle the translucent moment when it becomes obscure in philosophical time empire upon empire in philosophical time what strange assimilation of task and fortune and willpower get wound up in philosophical time? What is a mistake? What strange fossils that might show copies of traits and let the world come in as petal, as small as petal, for one who once meant strange or in for mistake or melancholy at the mouth like a movie actress known for this melancholy at a at mouth as a badge or downturn of fortune that one was a genius in philosophical time the heart gone soft or obsolete would that ever be in philosophical time quick eyes like foxes shaping the world as in meet me by moonlight in philosophical time, quivering and everything else, kusha grass or aspen, emphatic yet reticent if chance was a sign that might shift in philosophical time. I made love to you in philosophical time. Could be just like that, a sign in philosophical time she the unfeeble species in philosophical time the trees the greenery and so on all partake of self-existing equanimity she a perpetual claim on the notion of week of day of hours of minutes of nano seconds in philosophical time. As if once upon a movie's philosophical time, the sentient being went leaning and lurching. The sentient being drew back, collecting her pencils and lines. The sentient being was steady and unassuming. The sentient being was trying its size on for dominion. Certainly, domination was a powerful goal for the human being. What could sentient being possibly gain beyond his, her own lifetime? Or someone without such gender identity, who doesn't choose sides or gender or color, who is pushing against boundaries, Perhaps identifying with dragon, with werewolf, with cheetah, all covered in bright tattoos, scoring, branding, writing, intricate luminous designs of flame etched into skin, marked with the sentence that might say, sought your acquaintance, that could say, the kindest of heroes, that could, if it would dare speak. We don't need the kindness of heroes anymore. Maybe sentient being will think on this further, furthering his, her, one's sentences, how we differ from them, animals, but not in suffering, sentient beingness. This is possible. After all, a sentence is a kind of child of the sentient being. 
Sentience is knowing, but sentence is knowing meta-language. And you get into linguistics, your stuff of meta-dreams, dream sentences with appetizing structures. And you wonder, was this what sentience is for? To make sentences like, and give the woman of stone a chance, her doleful ancestor, or he emitting zeal, a round head, silky toad, or her face gallantly open, keep snake venom from catching the drift, or seals with marvelous zeal deplore imprisonment, or get fed, get fed up, up the animal, or I shall dance in my leopard skin in soft tulidary's light, perhaps playing the catgut strings is more appropriate to sentient beings' connection to the visceral animal or what stares up from a plate in front of the sentient being who sits inside him, her, one's own self, way back where you lie back inside the fluvially eroded material, a floodplain. Think about it beyond this sorry account of soft lit huff and bluff, the pornographic sentient one embarrassed by too many action movies, too many cartoon characters, seductive heroines. One was worried the sentient being had only obligatory rhythm, a correct use of time the sentient being thought was not necessarily serving him, her one well, to be more spontaneous, more alluvial, more inside petroglyphs, my folly, or rock-cut tomb. Therefore, it was time to a sentient being, mere animal instinct. Or in what way may I prevail with this type of thought? Enters the head, and sentient being is on automatic. Sentient being might as well be a robot in all media scopes conducting war reviews, because if sentience is dominance and survival the classic mode, how does the mind go observing clever hermaphroditic fish survival, courting waves and tides? And how discursive does the interspecies sentient being sur survive to be, sink or Swim, fly, climb tree, burrow under. Was it to smile ambiguously or weep to gain sympathy? Many motives to attribute to sentient being, among them the motive of digression and parlaying to human advantage. The sentient being needs to get his, her act together at the bargaining table. Chips are down and everyone is playing close to the vest, close to the chest, the community pork barrel chest, might be some cause for alarm, the coffers are emptying, where do time and money go? Animal realm free of money, sentient being quips after midnight, let's just collapse and go to bed, and then sentient beings nightmares arrive with fear of death, saying things like women get into their shadow troubles, spinsters like spiders, while another sentient being is joking, puffing on a cigar, painting his masterpiece, and yet another sentient being is making odd noises and rooting around and acting strange and making a bizarre impression at this late hour in patriarchal space. The marquee in his cups and she, the Marquesa, collapses in stupor. Life is struggle, she adds. Does one pity the sentient being? Well, the sentient being has a chance for greater depth perception and awareness. 
knows surroundings, constructs mandalas and diagrams and shoots a movie, opening scene with a sentient being who goes down on another in a mirror mimic pose, is solvent for the going, and then rises weapon in hand. Or it's just too silly. It's a joke on a sentient being. Or maybe a sentient being stands around in the action movie looking for something to do. Not enough motivation, then okay, decides to rob a bank. And then the sentient being goes into hiding with three women, one who is really a man, weird sex with all three. A sentient being gets in a car in a North African city. Then a sentient being fires a shot into the colorful street market. A sentient being is incarcerated and fantasizes of escape. It's a bombed out villa somewhere, or it's an empty and smoggy city. Sentient being is looking very serious now, as a deserted boatyard pans into a long walk along a pier, someone pauses, turns around. Music, somewhat orchestral, swells, all taking place under an L train in your hometown. Somewhere, something repeats in a filmed episode. That is, this only real is disintegrating now. Like, like now, like brittle, salacious rock fragile as the light wears beneath it. The little bulb, the small machine, the beehive tomb, or it's a playground before sentient being was in a conflict between lovers who are in migration period, trying to return to the scene of a crime. There is an object that needs to be confiscated, a telltale pair of glasses, a cigarette lighter, bronze, Fibula. You know what I'm saying? It is a parent and a child escaping the 21st century. No pets allowed. It is a tale of heroic deeds without animals. A sense of prearrangements with the neurons advancing. It is in another language. The subtitles are challenging because the words have a nest into the whites of the film. A kind of savagery ensues, and the words have a nest ensues and backgrades and the sense of honor and sentiment. While someone is rescued and disguised in order to escape the telltale fascist uniform below the waist. Black and white is played out in a nuance of desire. It is a captivity narrative of desire. How do we respond? What is the neurotransmitter to do with this sentient being narrative? What is the reward? How will the dopamine behave? Who decides what is choice? Emotional extremes. The unfolding of desire, the stark reply in a spiral toward a faux crime. And there is an ocean. There is a voyage. There is a very long shot of water. There is a dog sled running. There is a pause. There is destitution in Hong Kong. Or it's a troubled zone of control and demarcation in another Asian city. It is a kind of calendar run backward that wants you to feel the flicker of its impulse in a reduction of narrative control. Vehicles are maneuvered. Windows are opening. Something is felt to be imminent. A bomb will go off. In the comedy, someone slips and falls down, and the pun is explicated, need or need epistemology. The start of the new moon beginning with the crescent moon, or as in, is there a man, tiger, or rabbit in that moon? They met that night as if by accident. 
What had been accomplished in these conversations they both wondered and made reverie of? How had their positions shifted? How had they become more animalized or actual or uncanny or existing in memory of animal, in memory of one endangered or evolved in the course of speaking and writing? They had evolved. He had died. This was in real time. The book that was his name was still sitting on the familiar table, his image now gone. But she held it, the photo of him. She kept trying her own story on him. What was achieved by a swerve in gender, swerve in neocortex as the boat moved back and forth, shore to shore? Was something achieved? It was, and how had human become hybrid to survive? And would she survive? Answer, of course. She will, relatively speaking, survive. Not until 1800 CE were fossils recognized as remains of living things of the past and accepted as a valuable record of the past. Sentient, not rational, form, not eternal. When you know someone well, when you are his or her familiar, you feel him, her, next to you, waking or sleeping. You intuit the messages the she you are sure of sends as familiar as a sender of messages. Telepathy recognize you, recognize your sympathy, exist in a kind of witness protection pro mode. You, person, are familiar and need to be made buoyant by this water. You might be handmaiden, you might be traveling companion, you might be strange familiar, you might be mermaiden, distress, distress. As they went out from the island, someone had been speaking of the desperate economy. She, her other, rode along the side of the boat now, seaweed in hair. And someone speaks, we are running out of fuel. And someone else, sorry condition, eating our ancestors. And of the economy of places, experts speak now. That would become of a necessity. Way stations, holding patterns, running out of fuel possible sanctuaries if we could just drop everything, start over, start over with wind and sun, look up or else be swallowed by disaster, tsunami made bold and ritual when you create a boundary for your need below the radar or else, you know, familiars, you recognize them by their entanglement. What had been restrained, dudenged, were of a loom, our beautiful desire will not pass by. When you are alive in a difficult time, you grasp at all the signs, indications they are sending. Nitrous, walked out in vain, signal distress. She was saying how the water curves around our bodies. And around my thoughts, peering toward her, she is now wave upon wave. And you, she indicates, might be made more alive in this. From womb, from egg, from heat and moisture, a kind of transformation. The birth of birds from an egg is called birth from wind. The birth of mammals from womb is called birth from fire. The birth of insects from heat and moisture is called birth from water. The birth of trees from the transformation of a seed in the ground is called birth from earth. The birth of miraculous beings is called birth from space. Ordinary birth is from a womb, birth from egg is from a joined sperm and egg, but in a container different from the womb itself, as in a test tube conception. Birth from heat and moisture could be from cloning, she mused. Birth by transformation androids, she wondered. What statuphilia, animatronic, real do doll, gynoid, cyborg inhabits here? Repli -E Q1 Expo, who has been heard to breathe, or Valerie, a simulacra of woman stationed in dining area, we listen in. What may I serve you? How to please? My mind imagines. Sorry, retort. Sorry, sorry, retort, retort. I mean, what will you have? Anything you want. A bowl to catch my android tears. Beneath the steel sky, she waits on you. How to tell time in a transhuman universe, it might be even more necessary that the clocks run on time. Continuing to trace a ritual mind stream, devoid forms, forms filled with light, images appearing in a magic mirror without any mirror. What was the time before the Big Bang? 
the big bounce, the universe rapidly contracting before the big bounce, not ever seen in this lifetime, this cosmological constant, positive or negative energy density that could permeate empty space, loop quantum gravity, are different forces, including gravity, all aspects of a single force? Let me know, get back to me, soon. And of these horrific techniques of brain torture, implants, chip implants that mock humanity, let me know, get back to me, soon. Rainbow body, no bones, no anything, but light, like golden electricity, luminous pearls, Images from a mirror, time out of time, timeless eternal state, radiate body, vajra, body, finally, a real person emerges. Moving through a circle of animals, a celestial coordinate system, as in the Babylonian zodiacus, sodai, Sanskrit, path through which the sun travels, path through which we all travel in performance of human, of animal, Body, empathy accompanies this narrative, oral and motile ligaments of memory. Out of prelinguistic propitation to this procession of words, as ramble twins, crab lion, virgin scales, scorpion, archer goat, water bearer fish, complicated interspecies appear. We majestically turn within their thrum in night sky, advancing toward our last words together. Colored spot we see after looking away from a bright light, mere trick of the eye, not made of atoms, does not appear just in the imagination, you think? Seen non-conceptually with eyes open or shut, I'll try this, you watch. And this is where I speak of the inner purpose of the geomancer's initiation to you of closed eyes, Purpose of the wheel of time is to arise in a pathway and mingle with resultant forms, not made of atoms as the breath shifting through the 12 signs of the zodiac and the life spirit drop circulates around the body in a 30 day cycle correlated to the phases of the moon. During the waning moon, it passes on one side of the body. During the waxing moon, back up the other, all the while chanting alchemy alchemy. Sorry, retort, sorry, sorry, retort, retort. And don't forget, my friend, the refrain, manatee, humanity, always consider her the true free radical. Rainbow body, all the colors and all the dreams of animals and radicals and humans blending in. Green, action, blue, Clarity of intellectual aspiration, red, attraction, yellow, curing, white, the space within. Stars, backlit by the proverbial psyche that needs animal to survive, that stays on as animal mind is on. Where they meet, could that be the end of the poem? Perhaps, yet you go on at on, one on one. When the breeding female goes into estrus, she and her mate will spend an extended time in seclusion. Pheromones in the female's urine and the swelling of her vulva make known to the male that the female is in heat. Lust makes the world spin, or blindness. And at the last you noted, they seal the falcon's eyes before setting them off. They tremble so. Without care, without seed pearl, without stitching, close the eye of the falcon. Without seemly rectitude, without the platitude of, oh, thou muddled, media pundit, without questionable doubt or metabolism, without a geographic category of speech that will travail, without a hint or glint of secular, Mastery without ritual framing of that which should be plural could be axiomatic and of many pistols made 
without hiding, without all of them hiding in their small ways. Paws tucked under, claws retracted without measure and accountability. Without a non-routine check of passports, pets allowed. And how deportees suffer the long reign of inhumanity. Without your endurance of watching, always watching someone else go down. Humiliation. Without humiliation. Without the venom of humiliation, without contrapuntal structure, without the singing voice of lurk, of volume, modest, and zooplankton's glorious light that travels with and for you many light years, without the temple of inscription, without the Paleocene of geologic time, without its placental mammals, with a man, a plan, a canal. Might you remember Panama with the splurge laurel without the animals that haunt the system, without translunar spectrums beyond your familiar moons, and without the sinews you count on, with their stretch and synaptic tug like lunar devices that carry you over, carry you above many moons. Without the demotic, how will you be in a version of demotic? Without the theatrical sense of illusion and bending about on or inside a thermosphere without it working against you. And when it does, being able to go on without it, without gavats, without gazelles, which you study in neighboring Persian poetries, without spallation and without the diving bell, how will you survive? Without rapacious wildcats, without the sense of security you have always expected, without your familiar stage fright, without the caves, without the bombing of caves, without the mystery of caves, without the caves in your memory of that mystery that lives in caves, without caves that long to exist in the handprint in the cave of that memory that haunts your brain cavity or wolf cavity cavity of well without the rivets that hold the mammal together that hold the whole throbbing machine together that assert the rivet dominion of pinion lore without which you do not have a plan of fastening together of ribs of wings of arms for the automaton automaton that holds the capital together without its own mind of wheels and cogs and mudras that run the show without all the pixels and efforts of more dominion, without facticity, without facsimiles of intent of high technological information, without high speed wonderment, without multiple star cross wonderment, without the wonder of discovery that you are warm, you are a Human, but maybe not so warm human. You are cold-blooded, remote, bold, predatory, without mercy to so many of them. Other, others, so many you never encounter, never see without preemptive night, without predilection of night, without the restitution of night, without which you never recover, you never sleep, you never dream, you never heal. Without night's netherworld ancestry, without its dark bulb of survival held over you in eyes, mind, in the heart's mind, in the eye of falcon of manatee, of which you are no small part. Without the enigmatic, the obscure, the tragic, the lone one, without magnetic poles. Without the mass from an infinitely distant position to a designated point in a static electric. Magnetic or gravitational field without the blush of the betrayal, without the blush of dear aspiration, without credentials of what keeps you here bound and chasing and bidden without privilege. How will you manage without facing the other way from one another, without that being in agreement, facing 
without opposable thumbs, without your vending, your selling of vendettas, without the animalized ones that live near you, underneath, above, inside, around, in a legend, in dream, in story, in song, in extraordinary renditions of escape and survival without borders to cross, without needing to carry things over borders, the invasion of your homeland coming, coming soon. Without it, what call in the night? What call is answered? What nuance, what tantrum in the night, what martyrdom of dreaming, your own birth, your own end of history or end, a speculation of that end, what call, what alarm is sounding deep in the home question mark om manati padme hum om manne padme hum om humanity padme hum om out of current one from discovering the mermaids by thor jansen November 8th, 1977. Upon awakening the next morning, I looked over the side of my boat and saw evidence of two manatees gazing, grazing on the other side of the lagoon. Then one head broke the surface and looked over in my direction. During the morning, the two gradually edged closer and closer to the boat. One was a juvenile male about six feet long, the other an adult female measured about 11 feet. As I watched them, I felt an unusually strong and persistent attraction towards them, a feeling I was not familiar with. I had the strongest, though unexplainable, impression that they were trying to communicate with me. I lowered my hand and lightly splashed the water. To my extreme surprise, the adult manatee seeing this came right up to the side of the boat and lifted her head above the water. I slowly lowered my hand until it was within an inch of her nose. In a quick movement, she pushed her nose upward, nudging my hand and disappeared back into the water. I could hardly believe this had happened. I felt a mild tingling sensation from head to feet. I put my hand back into the water and within a few seconds, I found myself stroking a big, soft, vanity nose. She would stay for a few moments and then go away only to return again in a minute or two. This went on for quite some time until I decided to see what would happen if I entered the water. I could not have been better received. The huge but graceful Cyrenian swam over to me and brushed up against my body. I rubbed her back. This she seemed to like very much. We swam together around the lagoon. I had begun to wonder what had become of the young male when I happened to notice him following us at some distance. Eventually he too came over and allowed physical contact. This interspecies meeting continued the most of the day and the young manatee became increasingly playful. He would allow me to come just within reach of him and then would rock it away at full speed, which for a young manatee is about 12 to 15 miles per hour. At other times, he would allow me to put my arms around the middle of his body and we would swim together. Unexpectedly in a quick jackknifing movement, he would throw me off and swim around in circles. The older female was not interested in this sort of play preferring to solicit my scratching and rubbing near dark after grazing for a time on some tender grass along the bank. My new friends swam over to me. I realized that they were about to leave. I can only say that I feel that a bond of love existed between us. I watched from the middle of the lagoon as they swam out of sight. I felt that this had been one of the most joyful days of my life. Two, cross wounded galaxies. William Burroughs. Three, Coda. Beginning 210 million years ago, mammals came into their own scurrying and prowling with a mind of light under the light of the moon. The true oldest mammals are thought to have been small creatures awake and active during the night. Mammals do not become sluggish, but active in daily surroundings. Muscle movement generates heat. Continuous activity in the cold has always been a mammalian trait. Sharp, dilated eyes care for the young, the heat within. Glim glow at mirror splits a permeable skin. Thin divisions 
between species, other side morph in reflection or rev up recognition, afraid of claw, boot. Who are we in sentience, unnatural enemies? Then what riddle song or reach of mind to mind each as she can in out of water, spin fables, survival tale, summon lore of extinct ones and struggle that they not go that way, rather sprung cage, absent tank, chain broke, trust as allegory's way to liberate, investigate a magic act, how tooth, I, love, may cure, neurons, rainbow, pack, concluded Year of the Earth Mouse. And there's a wonderful dog howling. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so amazing. So amazing. I'm so grateful. HR, comrade in arms, all of you. Alistair, magnificent. Thank you, Anne. Together, Thank and all, you. all the readings were so astonishing. So much. Support. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Anne. Everybody, everybody. Thank you, HR. I don't know if you could all hear that howling dog towards the end, but it was kind of amazing. <laughs> Just bite her hard. <laughs> There's lapping water outside this window. I don't know if you. Oh, can really? Hear. From a stream? <laughs> no, I'm in the bay in Provincetown. Oh, I, it, it's the literal lapping. <laughs> Wonderful it's setting for the manatees. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. you. And is there still a lot of water there in the East Coast? I'm about to get on a plane in a few hours. Oh, good. <laughs> it's not it's raining. raining. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful next couple, I mean, weekend, I think. Um, it will be good. So feel free to chat. It's been a while. It's been a, a long reading, but an incredible time. Thank you, everyone, so much. So we can stay on for some more time. Yeah, just to say hello. Where's Monette? Where are the children? Patrick? Corey? Monette's <laughs> dead. Okay. Silly. <laughs> well, thank you for enduring yeah. that long. We, I thought it would just take about two hours. But I loved all the nuances and different ways of putting it. I feel like I heard it. I, I think the manatees heard it too. <laughs> Really there'll be a swerve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really rich ritual. Really um, uh, amazing. I, I felt this. Yeah, I said it was Moby undicked. <laughs> <laughs> Julie, I want to see you. Can I see I you? I want to see yeah. you, sweetie. I miss I everyone. I, 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 I really do. Much. Yeah, it's such a beautiful reading. I'll remember this. Don't forget, donate to the human, to the, yeah, to, not to humanity, to the manatees and tell everyone. I had this, a similar, well, not an experience as prolonged as yours, but I remember my first encounter with manatees in Florida when I was at the Atlantic Center for the Arts. Yeah, that's where I saw them too. Yeah. I figured as much. Yeah, it's very powerful. Um, it stays with you, their spirit. Yes, beautiful, a masterpiece. Thank you for all the extra things people did with music and voice, it just so luscious mm -hmm. for me, really appreciate it. You want Chinese food? I'm sitting in a parking lot. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I see Ed in the background in HR. It's so wonderful to see you. You haven't changed much, except you look more like a baby, even now. <laughs> More than ever. When am I going to see you, Anne? Are you headed to New York? Yeah, New York. New York. Tomorrow. Okay. I'll start walking. <laughs> I'll come get you, Judy. Come back oh, look at there. Princess. I'll pick you up in Buffalo. Just oh, yeah. Up to Buffalo. Just, okay, two hours away. That's good. I can bike that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. I don't like to leave the state boundary. Okay. <laughs> Joking. Uh, 
Oh the text oh. gives me hope, like words, you know, renew them as spells. Mm -hmm. And I love your the introduction. I reread the book today and I used um, the piece about the continuity, about bring, bringing on more enlightened people in the sense of urgency, but also the continuity of, of the staying in mind of continuity, even while there's an urgency. It was so... Right powerful for me today yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no these <laughs> yeah that advice helps it's so it's such a crazy time my god it is a crazy time and crazy. i have a crazy house if anyone wants to get away from crazy and then go crazier <laughs> <laughs> oh man so heartfelt yes beautiful jonathan where are you He's asleep. Hi, no, I'm here. We're in, we're in Hawaii. Oh, we're, in Hawaii. We're, in, we're in Honolulu. Yeah. <laughs> we had to leave for food, but we went to get poke bowls and came back for the oh, nice. oh, the poke bowls. The poke bowls, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> I had my first poke bowl. <laughs> New glasses too. With, oh yeah, the shades. Yeah. yeah the aviators. <laughs> yeah. Professor Skinner. That's me, uh, hiding hiding from my job right now. Oh my God! Hey, and and doesn't he look like the skipper on the boat uh, near the Atlantic Center of the Earth? <laughs> near oh, the Manatees. A long time ago. Hey, look, here's my mom. I remember you. Oh, Hi, how are you? I remember Great you, time. Anne. What long ago in Santa Fe? Yes. Oh, you up on the hill, the Museum Hill. Yes, I remember. Oh, I also remember you at at the Guadalupe Church. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Your son was in the hospital. I know. It was a rather fraught moment for yeah. you. Well, it was great. You were there, oh, yeah. May May. May was great. I, st I think he was there about nine days. But there, there he is, Ambrose. He's here out here with well, his own. Cora, uh, seeing Cora was so good. Fun. What Cora's was your leg? Well, it's all right. Yeah. Julie has a new epithet. Uh, for you, and it's Ma Waldman. Ma Waldman. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I think we should add La, so it's La Ma Waldman. Ma Waldman. <laughs> should we go? Yeah, we should go. Grandma. So bye, everyone. Bye. I wish bye. everybody well, stay well, and happy Thank you, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you much. Wonderful. So much gratitude. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everyone. Stay well. well. Good night. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Anne and HR. That was really great. Thank you, Serena. I was trying to find the um, the manatee that we adopted. The picture. Yes, we adopted Lily. Manatee that I, I'm just trying to get it on my 